Greetings family, this is Bomani Taimba and welcome to our Africa for Africans Tours Investment Conference call for August 11th of 2024. And uh, this represents our 18 year uh, doing these incredible journeys of a lifetime across uh, 12 African uh, countries uh, from 2006 to 2024. And uh, we just completed our 35th uh, journey, and I'll go to all the group page of literally all of the 35 group uh, journeys that we have had in the last 18 years. So it's been a busy two decades, and two years earlier, I traveled to uh, five different African countries before we set it off at the sixth country to Ghana. So started out in Senegal in March, and... Egypt in April, and that is 2004. So this is 20 years uh, later. And so we're revisiting Egypt for the first time 20 years later. And it's been something where I've had a lot of people who even tra wanted to travel with us in the past. And honestly, I've always referred them to some, you know, some of the good scholars that I know that do tourism. But unfortunately, most of them have passed and most of them are no longer in business. Uh, so we just have to uh, step up the mantle and uh, carry on that journey. Uh, so Egypt is always a special place and just literally just looking forward to it. I, was, I really enjoy my Ghana journey, but I just really had to this, like, I wanted, to, I wanted to even spend more time in Ghana, but I know I really need to come back and get the rest of the half of the people that are uh, looking to travel with us to Egypt and uh, also get uh, the energy of the people that we need to get to uh, South Africa going. So we have uh, lots to uh, talk about, but... Uh, so that's uh, what we have committed to, um, committed to this, uh, doing some more historical countries uh, in Egypt. So this will be literally the first journey of a lifetime. And I have a good partner that I'm working with. And we'll also work on doing some lives like we're doing earlier. And uh, you know, time has just been busy. We spent a whole lot on Liberia and a whole lot of energy in Ghana. So you know that was uh, necessary to just make sure that we had a, a beautiful, successful uh, 18th uh, year as try to create new schedules and work with different people and try different dynamics to just uh, say that, you know, we've covered all aspects of just reaching out, connecting, and just uh, exploring Africa. Uh, so what I want to start off with is um, the list of uh, countries that we're traveling to. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, go to the uh, website uh, for all of the documentation and also go to uh, the YouTube page, which is, I don't know how, individuals may look at some things you know when you're just you know when you just grew up as an adult in this technical world and then that that's just been your world from you know from from that point to now uh things may just seem a little easier for you uh so i'm always depending on feedback from others that are seeing the information this let me know if it's clear so the youtube page uh well first of all the website that's um uh, it's you know it's a simple organized flow all of the uh important information schedules on the left and then all the documentation is on the right uh so once you just get used to that this uh similar similar flow to the U youtube page once you go on the youtube page it's all of the current videos and the current playlists of all of the countries so every country that we have been to uh since 2017 a uh, playlist was created uh, that's when i started creating it creating it and that's also when we started doing multiple uh countries per year and multiple itineraries uh so uh, that's uh you know and things previous you know it's you know you're limited as far as documentation but that's when we really started this having this a whole collection of uh, videos and then even you know going further back um from 2011 this really got into the you know youtube so it's uh 4400 videos on there and um the best way i'll say to navigate it is through the playlist if you're you know if you want to see what we did in South Africa the last two years. You have two, uh, the last few uh, journeys. Uh, we have the playlist there where you can literally see all of the videos. And uh, it's the same thing with um, Facebook and some of Instagram. And then now the Google photos, you'll be able to see some of the photos. So uh, as we travel in the future journeys, my goal is just to encourage everyone just to put their best photos on uh, on the Google uh, photos. And if you, know, you have half of the uh, group members who are taking photos, you know, mix it up. It looks great. Uh, my goal is always to shoot videos that's just been in that world the last 20 years. Uh, and that's what I'm definitely looking forward to this going back to Egypt because the 2004 documentary that I have on YouTube is, you know, is that 20 years old. And it was a, it was a whole different uh, 
it was just a whole different time and it's just it's scary I try not to even look at the video because it's scary looking at yourself like 20 years earlier it's this it's that uh it's um it's that kind of energy uh but uh I, I guess I'm still excited uh as I was that time but it's uh it wasn't my journey so that was easier to travel to travel to Egypt so one thing I was focusing on was having a good time and recording and now it's just a little different situation uh yeah to this handle a whole bunch of business so we have some good partners because I want to again just focus on documenting you know that journey that we uh, traveled through it's just always incredible when you go back and you just honestly you just look back because while you're tra traveling you know you're even sometimes uh while the tour guide is out there talking or on the site some people on the bus or other places are doing something else or just distracted by something else so it uh but I'm I'm locked in focus and you know we're just recording and documenting. So when you go back and you look at your big TV, all you have to do is click on that YouTube link and then you'll be able to just literally just play uh all the videos throughout. Uh before they didn't have as much commercials, but uh that's uh unfortunately a part of the uh the uh, business. Uh but uh, all the documentation is there and just look to just keep on sharing it because that is the truest way to get uh individuals just open to literally just uh, processing uh, what they see in the country and just get, giving you an idea. It's a whole different world once you, uh, you know, get there. But uh, at the same time, too, uh, what that does is just give you some kind of idea. Uh, just like I try to talk, I try to do different things um, and just let people see this is who you're traveling with, uh, someone that's just a business technology person and just trying to do our best to see what we can make move and have, have happen in Africa. And uh, tourism has been great. Tourism is always good. So I'm always telling everyone just enjoy tourism, enjoy good times there. And if you're looking to do anything else beyond tourism, uh, just put together a serious, well-organized plan with uh, the best of the people that uh, you know and have experience and connections in Africa and, you know, all the best and things like that. Uh, but, you know, you're dealing with a different world. So definitely I always encourage that. I wish I could do more investment conference like we do in Ghana, but... Uh, Unfortunately, yeah, it's just it's just too much pressure to deal with. So um, you know, we're in Tanzania, we're in you know, Egypt coming up, or in South Africa. You know, you just get to focus and enjoy the uh, journey, and you know, no doubt, well, our goal is to network and build business connections, um, and just kind of work it out. But you know, Ghana's taken a toll off me to where it takes so much energy to even do some of the things that we do, because uh, you have to really just be locked in. Just like if you're looking to move somewhere, uh, you definitely have to just make sure you're on the ground and you're focused and you have your team. So processing, um, and this is my uh, classic uh, background with the colors uh, behind, behind myself uh, is uh, the last um, uh, Journey of a Lifetime t-shirt that's uh, Ghana. And this is uh, the South Africa journey. Uh, so it's uh, just exploring different uh, ways to just mix red, black, green, and gold together. And trust me, I've I work work it to where I've came up with endless different combinations. Uh, so just when you thought like the one behind you, it's the colors are flipped around for the Senegal and the Gambia. Uh, so and you need to think about it. They all have different names. So those are the things that uh, our, you know, our goal is to give you as just an appreciation to give you as a gift, give you as something to where we can just uh, one of the, one or two days we collaborate on certain colors. Uh, so that has been perfect with the group pictures. I have to get more serious to let those who are taking the group pictures really take their time and make sure everything is framed up. But uh, but fortunately, editing technology allow you to make some kind of damage control. So most of the photos look good and you know definitely recommend when all of us are traveling on the next journey. Uh, when we say when we call for group photos, uh, it's you know just focus because once I take all those group photos and I edit it. It's just, just a collection of group photos that uh, will be shared with you on the WhatsApp and also the Google Photos. And it's just, you know, it's kind of like this, any other great experience in life, uh, you know, you have, with a group of people, whether it's in high school, universities, tech school, you're, you're taking a group photo and it is those memories in those times. So I even have my old, uh, what year was that? 1996 uh, U.S. Navy boot camp photo up here, uh, right under you know, some other photos. Uh, this place is decorated interestingly with uh, those elements of just uh, the, the world you get out there and try to just make a change, make a contribution, try to, uh, you know, 
put us in a relevant situation for us to compete, for us to encourage a generation to uh, be your best and don't limit yourself and take on challenges and things of that nature. So the whole place is represented. That's you know the that's the uh, book library and then the the actual digital library with a ridiculous amount of uh, DVDs, documentaries, uh, lectures of dealing with Pan Africanism, the history of our people. And all different situations uh, are all on DVDs, and I started converting more of them to digital files to be able to share them easier. And this is this place um, um, that you know modified in the different uh, houses, you know, the two different houses I've lived in Jonesboro, uh, and well, three in the last uh, almost twenty years. And uh, it's decorated similar, and it's just to you know you come by, you know we talk our presentation, uh, many things that we can connect and talk about. And it's just the element, and eventually the goal. Honestly, it's a hard goal. The goal is to build that community land that we have in Ghana, and I spend most of my time in just processing ridiculous amount of information and options, and trying to figure things out to just get there to where everything could be moved from here in Georgia as much as I love it. So just having this in a community setting and be able to work with other people that we have. Um, as a part of our community and group and be able to basically honestly just rec uh, recruit a young generation of, of people who you know could be future talents uh, you, you know you're required all this knowledge in business and technology and you know it's cool to make your money in training um, which is always good but also look into this you know, pass on the, the energy to a whole new generation um, and you know take your brand uh, generational so uh, the one of Africa tours that we do just want to really just build a staff of a young generation to, you know, you know just like any other corporate uh, dream to this, you know, compete to get positions to run something to where it will benefit them and benefit our people and just trying to get us more into those things, uh, which is always hardcore responsibility. So we do our best. So appreciate everyone. I've showed us all the love, all the energy, all the support. Uh, you know, um, us doing things together is never an easy thing, but uh, it you know it always proved to me that we can, especially when you just put out a certain energy. Uh, and this is the right thing, uh, regardless of whatever the situation in Africa is, uh, which is always you know a combination of many things. Uh, somehow we have to be able to build a future and a future connection. It's um, it would change the dynamic for us as a people. And that's what I got from Marcus Garvey and I got from other great minds that talk about uh, us figuring it out. So this is me trying to figure it out over the years from the tours and investment and this doing all the technical things that we can do to where it's a complete this uh, investment of just building that energy in a town that's advanced in technology. And you have a generation of uh, people who want opportunities that's from here that's willing to make a move and work with uh, those of us we have in Africa and build that and encourage other people to bring their brand because it's a whole town, uh, Jahadzi. So I do have videos and photos of our last journey and the goal is to get them up. And just hopefully people can bear with me on the things that we talk about because I was being real as possible because I guess I just really need to just be honest with folks that oh, you know when we invest in and when we try to make this move, uh, it's better for us to just honestly just uh, take our time, do it right. You know, like we're going to build roads. You know, you heard me talk about the roads, how you know money was invested in. And the rain came and washed the roads away, things like that. And just trying to get into those honest conversations and not trying to discourage people. If we do it, it's literally fine. Uh, but uh, telling you that uh, you just have to just have the heart of a warrior to just be able to just deal with what you have to deal with. Because, you, you know, we're going to have to put our minds together to build an incredible future in Africa. If we want to see that. Um, and, you know, and we're, we're going to have to get some of our people there serious. So. These are the things that I'm always committed to make a move. You know, you're moving, you're shifting your enterprise and saying, hey, we're going to make it work in Africa and be able to just build investments on the beach and enjoy paradise at the same time. Like right now, you know, when I'm finished with tonight, it'd be nice to just go down by the beach and socialize and things like that. And that's just the truth, honest energy that, you know, we're coming with. Uh, so the journey continues. So let me uh, start with some screen sharing so we can go over the schedule and then we just open up for some conversation. All right, so this is our website, africaforafricans.org. So you're going to see a combination of many different things, uh, beautiful swimwear, beaches, ocean, historical, cultural places, uh, just like uh, videos, but it's going to be at least 75% this hardcore roots and culture. But 
trying to also make sure that that's not, not the only thing that we show. So anything else, you know, like uh, food, uh, people has always ask me about what kind of food we eat, what kind of uh, do this, is there universities in Africa, uh, nightclubs, whatever, I mean, and these may be simple questions that people may say that that sounds ignorant, but that's the real hardcore fact when you're just out somewhere and you're just doing some technical work with someone and next, you know, they ask you about your accent and they, you know, sometimes people don't know where my accent come from, but it's literally fine. You spend your time traveling for the last uh, few decades all over the place and talking to different people. You don't even know how you sound, but you just try to communicate and clear um, as possible. Uh, so uh, you end up just having these conversations and that's how we've gotten a lot of people to travel to Africa. You just end up just wanting to share more. And as I see different uh, photos this uh, screen streaming by, uh, trying to get some more of the new photos with the uh, group photo, more group energy, but uh, just showing you our different life and our growth of this building a brand and this, you know, going from this, you know, working with uh, people that we have there at the Atlanta airport and just traveling on leisure or just traveling, paying for a tour to this, building the energy and this, um, showing our experience. So that's uh, the 18 years um, photos. It's hard to really do this on a website because you know, you're know gonna put so much photos and it's hard to delete some of the old photos. And so you end up just showing this as much as possible. Uh, so to the, um, the Love and Revolution MP3 mix is a combination of this lots of roots and culture music, uh, mainly reggae, mainly artists from uh, Jamaica, mainly uh, speeches are, um, uh, whoever uh, replicate um, Marcus Garvey's voice, um, I don't know if these are actually his voice, but uh, you have audio from from those speeches and also Malcolm X. Uh, you know, people who are just uh, get inspiring energy from as far as Pan Africanism, which is you know, it's it's like a dying movement, but it's literally the 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 solution to uh, you know, hundred percent of our problems along with Black corporate economics. Uh, when you you know, we talk about. Amos Wilson, so you study the, the great minds uh, to figure putting a project together and putting some energy together. And, you know, you know, you have, you're spending your time and energy. So it has to be business because, you know, you know, when you do all these things, it's nothing but bills. Everybody got lined up for you. So you have to just make it uh, work. So um, and the good thing about this business that we run, it's um, it's most of the, you know, the profits and resources go into doing business with black people, doing business with us in Africa, uh, mainly and us also here. So it's a great uh, purpose. Uh, so it's probably one of the reasons why this, the years have gone by and you know you just keep going. So it's one of our biggest group, 43 people. That was uh, 2017, you know, back in those good years, sweet years, 2006 to 2019. But from 2020 to 2024, I would say we've been able to explore to different countries uh, because that's what you have had to do just to you know, kind of not stuck in this one or two countries and this you know, shared experience and then the opportunity presents itself with people showing interest. So there we are. Uh, so back to the music. So lots of beautiful, wonderful uh, cultural music with all of my favorite artists and music I grew up with, music that I connected into uh, being in the Pan-African movement for the last 20 years, meeting different people, going to different uh, places um, from doing presentation to this um, socializing different groups. Uh, it's just been an incredible journey. And that's uh, one of our favorite uh, photos right there for our last journey. Um, uh, welcome to the Ancestral River Park. Always one of the, the best photos of um, there in the Ascent Manso. And that's what Ghana is. is but I, that's what's made Ghana so special. There are designated sites that connect with us on our return. So when people ask me the difference, um, I love East Africa. It's uh, you know, uh, those represent my second and third best countries, which is like Kenya, Tanzania. Uh, you know, you know, you also add Ethiopia into the mix. Uh, it's just a different vibe and a different uh, energy. Uh, so we get to do a different program because initially uh, every part of Africa that we travel to is completely uh, different, and it allows you to just share those differences. So. Uh, yes, I'd love to do a lot of the things that we do in Ghana and other countries, but it give you a chance to just uh, do a unique itinerary. It's me and my uh, good brother Charles living in Ghana, so I have lots of people living in Ghana, and I get a lot of their feedback, so that's where I come up with a lot of my information, and then, you know, I spend many times in and out of countries also, so we're well equipped to give proper consultation and share proper information, and you hear nothing but facts and, you know, and direct information coming out of our mouth. Uh, never will we just make things up. Everything that we talk about, whether good, bad, or painful, or whatever, it's 100% uh, based on experience. 
All right, so when we go to the website, we scroll down and uh, what you're gonna see is this uh, flow of information in the main menu. The main thing I always have on there is our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. Uh, I've not talked about it much uh, over the years because I've just, uh, my goal is to just work on what needs to be worked on and spend less time trying to recruit people to join the community. We have enough people that have filled up almost all of phase uh, one, uh, which is the initial energy we need. And a few plots are available that we're just holding for a certain special people who we need to just get, um, who are ready to go and they just and need that start. But beyond that, uh, we do have 60 more acres and also it's just a lot of land in that area. So when we're building relationships with different companies here, the goal is to just encourage them to build a piece of what they have in Jahadzi and together, you know, you're building an entire town that goes beyond our community. Uh, the beach is still pristine and great opportunities, and most of that land is owned by the Ghanaian government. So you basically, you know, so you're, you're getting your best people to, you know, sit down with the people at the Land Commission, and you, uh, which is a direct government uh, connection to vested land, which is, it's ideal for us to be in a town with vested land, because then we can, you know, still work and connect with the chief of that area, but also, when we need to get things finalized, done, stamped, and laid out, it's done with the government. And and so, you know, you get things done. So it's a whole lot of things that uh, you'll see, you know, that we talk about with dealing with real estate in Africa, because I feel bad for a lot of people. Uh, you know, uh, it's been unfortunate. Uh, but the best you can do, uh, you know, after you go through your pain, sorrow, and frustration is to just get back to the drawing board and just look at, what you know, you can you know what you could have prevented uh, and how you could approach certain things and you, it's it's hard it's 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 painful so I'm always some people I'd rather save you a whole lot of time from going through what myself other people have gone through and as time go along it's like we're having people go through less and then that's how you get things done uh, if we consistently just you know you know put ourselves out there and just you know just get picked off it's just gonna happen uh, so. I've been encouraging more and more people to this, honestly, just operate with a united front. Uh, yes, I love my brothers and sisters in Africa, but um, you know, we, you know, you put yourself in a situation where it's, you know, it's what it is. It happens, uh, and you know, we're always the easiest to do things to each other. Uh, so, um, but if you're gonna make that move, because um, that's it. Uh, there's no turning back. We're further the closer to the end of the tunnel than anything else. Uh, and that's only a few years of working on Black Star, and that's from the, all the experience of this traveling and dealing with people and learning about different situations. And it, uh, you know, it doesn't kill you, you know, so it just make you stronger. Uh, so we're figured out this how we can just do a dynamic change of really just trying to just do business and investment in Africa, and making it communal, making it to where you know you are operating in numbers. And at the end of the day, what you're building to this, you get right to the point. You're building what we would call a real pan-African energy. You know, you have different uh, groups of black people from different parts of the, the known black world in a town and trying to put your energy together for investment business. And also the, the, the style of the culture of food, clothes, the culture of all aspects of music and different things you're infusing in that, uh, that uh, community. Uh, for me, that's more diverse than the situation that I've felt that you're, you're, you're running into in Africa, which is you're dealing with tribalism, you're dealing with uh, you and your business people against a tribe set of people who are dead set that this is how they're going to operate and you're the opposition and no matter what, you know, so it gets a little tricky. So I'm just sharing these things because we need to get these things in uh, documented calls. Let me stop for a second quick. I just uh, check in to uh, see if we have any messages and things coming up. All right, so family, um, if anybody have any questions, I'm going to continue going through the schedule. But if anybody have any questions, just please just uh, chime in. All right, uh, scrolling down, uh, that's the uh, set schedule that we have. We just came back from Ghana, July 11th to the 23rd. And um, you'll see the schedule in kind of an opposite flow on the main menu as it is in the direct uh, page. 
Uh, so that was a 24 journey of a lifetime. And uh, so it's like 24, this list of just different uh, uh, experience and different things that you learn. Uh, it's and it's this, and that's why I just, you know, after this uh, kind of this be like enterprising and jihadi, because there's just so much to share and, you know, so much to, you know, to just expand from. Because uh, there's not be, not be to experience, especially when it comes to this side, like, doing business like this, because there's no handbook or no layout of how you can do certain things, especially when you're investing and building the future of what you're doing in Africa. Uh, so let's uh, scroll down to our highlighted uh, journey, uh, which is uh, Egypt, our uh, roots and culture journey, November 20th to December 2nd. Uh, so once you click on the link, uh, which I want everyone to do when you're traveling with us, just click on the link and what you're going to see is a list of different uh, information, um, a itinerary overview, uh, which is the, the uh, what's included, what's not included, uh, full day-to-day -day itinerary, general terms, uh, preparation details, language translation, um, uh, which is on most of the uh, pages. Uh, and in this case, um, uh, we, we don't have anything for Egypt, but uh, we do have, uh, don't have anything for Egypt and South Africa, but other countries uh, we do. I don't think we have anything for Brazil either. But uh, it's mainly uh, uh, when we do Senegal on the Gambia, uh, Wildlife, uh, Kenya, Kiswahili, uh, Ghana tree. Uh, but it's something that, you know, we can all get more into with uh, trying to just share what we can share with uh, that tour link. Uh, it does give you a preparation details. And if uh, visa is required, uh, which most of the countries that we have on here, visa is required. Um, and you can just process through the information. For the Egypt journey, um, what I wanted to, uh, to toss into this kind of work it since um, it's the only country that I haven't been able to just work out a flight schedule to where we do connection flights. Um, but that's because, you know, we usually fly, fly with Delta, United, all the carriers that are U.S. based that have flights from everywhere. So, it, you know, they make it work to where, you know, you're leaving from the U.S. and connecting to, uh, you know, a part of Africa, a part of uh, Europe. Uh, but as far as uh, Egypt, uh, mainly what you're dealing with is Egypt Air and World Air Morocco. Uh, so, you know, their base is New York. So when I'm doing any flight dealing with uh, both of them, I just literally have to just make it from New York. Um, and so that's uh, a route that's very, you know, it's actually a reasonable route because for the first time in my life, I didn't have to fly to Europe to get to Africa. Like literally the first time ever outside. Well, yeah, it's literally the first time. Um, and maybe one or two times because we did have some direct flights from U.S. Uh, and Delta to Africa. Uh, but but uh, you basically use the Royal Air Morocco route, uh, which takes you to Casablanca. And then from Casablanca, um, depends on your flow of your flight and where you're going to. If you're going to Egypt, uh, it's about an hour and a half layover. And if you're going to Ghana, which I just uh, came from on that departure route, uh, it's an hour and a half. So that's not a bad route uh, itself. Uh, it just... Honestly, I just I didn't feel comfortable booking a group of people that uh, we, you know, we uh, committed to that we were going to get tickets on Delta Airlines, which we got most people tickets on Delta Airlines, and their the the comparable carrier would be United and British Airways and 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 so on. Uh, but we're in Iraq. I'd have to just have a discussion before we even do that. So it's something that, you know, uh, for New York people uh, in certain situations, it worked out good for them and. Uh, uh, we did have a group of people that agreed to it, and you know, so I worked it out in the past. But uh, I don't mind uh, doing that uh, journey, um, and then coming back, uh, you know, Kenya Airways from Ghana to uh, Nairobi, and then just just like everyone else, decide an unfortunate one day, twenty four hour layover, which is fine because you know summer is busy and summer is crazy. That's why we don't ever do summer schedule and even December schedule. I think we're just coming to the end of our last December schedule because uh, we just. It's been incredible how you've been able to just pull things off, but it's it's a different time now. Uh, you know, it's not so much uh, COVID nineteen, and so the months that people used to really travel, they're getting back to traveling. So that's why you see a shift in dates and things as we just change things up uh, to just get dates we can flow with. Uh, so that is um, yeah, so that is uh, you know, flight uh, routes, and um. Just looking at different flight routes as trying as I you know, get to the point where we try to use more of those more of the African carriers uh, and I just named the you know, three of the ones that we're in place of using uh, Kenya Airways when we do uh, Kenya um, Egypt and Royal Air Morocco uh, when we do Egypt because it's just it's a smooth sequence 
Uh, and you just you know get to where you need to get to and you avoid unnecessary long layovers. And I, I want to have is a good time to get from one gate to the next. Your bags have already transferred. All you're doing is just doing one last of security and you're just going, going on the plane. So we're going to try that one out. And so hopefully um, everyone, anyone who needs help with their ticket to get to uh, Egypt, just call me directly, honestly, and then I'll uh, get on the, um, you know, the phone or the computer with you and we just find your route. Um, and for people like myself who have like Sky Miles, you just use your Sky Miles, just book your route going and coming back. Um, then that's the recommendation I would give to everyone, especially for those who have just traveled so many, uh, in so many different trips. Uh, it's, it's just something that once you start doing and getting used to doing, it just works. So that's one of the options. All right, and uh, the Egypt uh, journey, um, it's, um, and I'll come back and I'll just go through some of those details. Uh, South Africa, uh, Johannesburg, and uh, Cape Town. Uh, and this is an uh, incredible flow from Atlanta to Johannesburg, and then from Johannesburg to Cape Town on South African Airways, and then back on Delta Airlines from Cape Town to Johannesburg. Incredible route. Um, and definitely look and see, um, um, look out for more people who are interested in that journey. Uh, it's an incredible journey. It is uh, pricey, but it's the same price as the Egypt journey, but it's also the most uh, expensive time of the year. And uh, the airlines are not even playing around anymore to where, you know, uh, they realize everybody want to travel at that time. And um, there's, there, there's no mercy. Um, you know, a few years back, you know, we was able to go to, you know, Ghana and go to a few other countries and it's, uh, it, was, you know, it, was, it was reasonable, but then also it was COVID-19 and it was, you know, limited of interest of people f flying and traveling. Uh, so things have picked up uh, is my definite point. And Kenya, um, looking to uh, this, uh, add a Kenya schedule. The last time we were in Kenya was 2005. That was one of my um, fact finding journeys. So uh, Kenya was always one of the better journeys that uh, we experienced, but it was a journey from Senegal to uh, South Africa in 2005. And, you know, when you have the extra days from work and you can just kind of take it and you have the opportunity to just go somewhere else, you just uh, take it and just end up just making all, make my way all the way back around from Southern Africa to East Africa. But now you have a direct flight that goes from Kenya to New York. So, uh, you know, times have changed and the world have changed where we can just work certain schedules. So that's another uh, new schedule uh, along with uh, Egypt countries I've been to before once uh, when I was just traveling between 2004 to 2006 and just documenting and just doing recordings and just, you know, doing your, 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 your field research in Africa. Right. And then uh, we come up on our Ghana routes and uh, Kota journey, May 24th to June 5th. This is the 25th journey uh, to Ghana and... Uh, Look into this, um, you know, get back to the days, the dates that work good. Uh, the May journeys have been this perfect time. And it's um, basically uh, your, you know, the rainy season is about to begin. So it's not, you know, so it's it's like perfect weather. It's, uh, it's still beach weather, um, but at the same time, too, you're going to miss any heavy flow of rain. And we're not meteorologists, but uh, you kind of just base this on your experience. And I know like the world shifts and change. So, you, you know, it's not uh, consistent. Uh, then uh, in November, we have two journeys. Um, and um, I've had people mention about Brazil, but I don't know, I'm not feeling the, the mentioning and so on. So um, I just kept it up there still. But uh, the, the tour that we have, um, the schedule for that I'll be going on and taking the group members on, I'll be Tanzania Roots and Culture Journey November 20th to December 1st, 2025. So that's a revamp from our last schedule, which was one of the best schedules because, you know, as time go along, what you're doing is just perfecting the itinerary. Uh, so just like the Ghana itinerary, um, you know, fortunately slash unfortunately, we've been to many other parts, you know, of the country, but it was more ideal to just focus on what we were, the parts of the country we have set to just experience it. And that's just really just focusing on two to three different parts of the country and just experiencing all of it. So Tanzania represent. Uh, the same floor as Ghana, you know, you have uh, the two uh, major cities, uh, Arusha and also Dar es Salaam. So it's like uh, Accra and Kumasi. And then you have um, Elmina Cape Coast where, you know, you just enjoy a beach resort, which we have always stayed on the beach uh, in Ghana. And then in Tanzania, we're always in Kenwa or Nungui, uh, which are the two best beaches there in Zanzibar Island. And it's a place that's just, 
you know, that's incredible. I mean, you, we're definitely limited on you know, our movement. So most of the places that you're going to go, you're basically spending two to three days or an average uh, three days. Uh, so, you know, that's what I say, make the best of it. And it does go by because all the itineraries are either uh, nine days or 10 days. And then our land uh, investment is just educational information that, and it just shows you where we started and and then you can also compare that to where we are, where houses are going up. And um, even though it's been failed, building up roads and building up certain things, it's, you know, it's still progress because you're moving towards uh, solutions. So family, that is our schedule. So let me, let me click on our Egypt journey here. Uh, so overview, itinerary, general terms, tour preparation, and if I think of anything else I need to add, I will add, and remember, visa is included in this one, so I'll reach out to everyone in September, and I'll get your information, I'll get your visa process, and um, and a lot of things will be speeding up, and especially with um, just being, you know, getting clarity of the last sort of people who want to make it so I can get them submitted. Uh, so let's go over the full itinerary, uh, since we talk about Royal Air Morocco and Right. All right, and this is, uh, and that's what we do. We build itineraries, and this is, um, we build itineraries that, uh, I would say we have a ninety nine percent completion rate. Uh, unfortunately, one or two things um, may not do, but then you always have one or two more other things, so it kind of works itself out. But uh, you're trying to plan a schedule one to two year ahead of time, and as time go along, you know you perfect the schedule. So right now we have set um, our Egypt roots and culture journey of a lifetime. Uh, so that is uh, set for, uh, and then people have asked me about another potential schedule. Um, the only date I even have available is uh, November, well, the same date, it's November 2026, because the last journey that I have, uh, which I haven't published yet, is uh, Ghana, May 2020, uh, 2026. Uh, so I'll be working on this, but I really want to experience the country and come back and adjust that itinerary some more. So I may just put it out initial, and the dates are going to be the same. And then, uh, you know, we just adjust itineraries and adjust the flow of how we get to the country. But I do like uh, this uh, adjustment flow. I had to make some adjustment because of the Nile Valley cruise. So this, uh, and that's why I also need to know who is coming. I just need to literally know before the, um, well, especially before the end of our next week. Um, right at the three month mark, uh, because I need to make sure that uh, we have. I, I would hate for anyone to join us and we don't have a, a space for you on the now cruise ship because you're very strict. So just give me a call. Um, you listen if you're on the call with me, and uh, so we can work it out. Uh, but uh, for those who have paid and uh, committed, uh, you're good. Uh, it's just people that are in limbo, which I do understand. Um, but uh, we try not to get too much last minute because I put pressure on me to do a lot of things last minute. And, you know, we're, we have a busy schedule here uh, as we grow our Bomani technology business to an incredible another level. Uh, so, but uh, nevertheless, so, so family, uh, day one, Wednesday, November 20th, we're going to all meet in New York JFK. Uh, so the flight departs at 8.15. So uh, meet and greet at 6 p.m. So everyone have more than enough time to get to New York before 6 p.m. Um, at the gate to where we can meet and talk, connect and share. Uh, uh, well, for the most part, I'll pack any tour supplies that we have. Um, right now, I know we have uh, t-shirts, bags, and uh, pens. As far as book, um, I'll do my best to figure that out. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, typing up uh, the books from scratch, uh, Every other country was maybe a little simpler, but I just have to just get a good start on it. So, uh, but I always have a digital book and we'll talk about the digital books that's on the website uh, for those who need to download the PDF, uh, which you can always send to your printer and print and or, want to, or just want to navigate the flip book on the website. All right, so once we meet up and connect, uh, our flight departs on Royal Air Morocco, um, AT201 to Casablanca, Morocco. And we arrive the next day, November 21st at 9, 10 a.m. So uh, day two, Thursday, November 21st, uh, while we're there at, uh, in Casablanca, we're going to transfer uh, to your connecting flight to Cairo, uh, Egypt. So that is going to be at 1035. Uh, so it was the same situation I had in Ghana. It was literally the same. I went 20 minutes, I went 30 minutes. And 
we still have to spend a little time waiting for you know to even get boarded. Uh, so that connection is good, and then also it's a domestic flight uh, or domestic Africa flight, or so it's not a big international flight with a big plane and a bunch of procedures. Uh, so once you get on a flight, uh, Royal Air Maroc, we uh, uh, take you directly to Cairo and Royal Air Maroc. And what I like about this schedule, because it's, uh, I had to really think about it and really process what the situation was going to be when I was told the change of the Nile Valley cruise, because Everyone who saw this uh, itinerary several months ago was different. So logistically, um, we take Royal Air Morocco, we arrive at 4.55, we can just get to eat, you know, get to Cairo and just unpack, relax, because, you know, some people would have been traveling from the November 1st. And when you're dealing with tour operators and tour operators in countries, they'll, you know, when you work with them and set certain things up, you know, they don't, this is what they don't see logistically. You know, and you have to explain it to them, you know, because I do understand that, you know, they may not be clear about certain things, but we're traveling early in the morning, November 20th, some people, and that's a long time to be there and then get to Cairo and then get on another flight and go to Aswan. So instead, we're just going to enjoy a nice welcome dinner to Cairo, Egypt, uh, and we're going to relax, kick back and uh, get some rest and you know, don't unpack too much because you're going to be you know, this, the good thing about it, this uh, hotel is close to the airport, so logistically it's perfect. We, you know, we get you up for early breakfast and, um, you know, we check out of the uh, hotel, uh, La Page, and um, we're going to uh, get you to, uh, we're going to get you to the airport uh, early and uh, the flight leave at uh, 7 a.m. Uh, from um, uh, Cairo to Aswan and get there at 8.40 so the goal is uh, we have it worked out to where we're going to work on early check into now ship. So this gives you a chance to um, you know, enjoy some breakfast, uh, take some rest, and then we'll get everybody up at noon for um, noon uh, buffet lunch and uh, on the ship. So you just enjoy your lunch and then uh, we just all set off to just enjoy an afternoon tour at the Nubian Museum. You're going to love this museum. This historical, this is really powerful. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, great museum, definitely want to make, I don't know how the procedure and the processes as far as taking videos, which is uh, between uh, Egypt and the, the French uh, countries I go to is just like a heartbreak. Uh, and, you know, so, but I'm trying to just uh, keep it together and not just break down and start crying. Some museum, unfortunately, you can't record anything in, uh, and maybe I do some spy glasses, but the museum is dynamic and it's, um, it, it, it ultimately, you know, it ultimately ties up, ties a history of what you're going to see along Egypt, um, you know, since we don't have a specific order going from Cairo down, um, you know, we, we'll start there, the Nubian Museum. And then also, um, we do we have a, one or two uh, basic tour, it depends on the time frame, um, love for, you know, those who want to get on camera right, so I can just record you and see, the, just a, see, you know, see, <laughs> see your face and see your expression when you get on the camera, that's always a good one to do, and uh, you know, we do a nice little uh, boat ride to the village noble tomb. So, you know, this is an afternoon, so I don't know how, how much time we got a lot. lot. Uh, so I'm hoping that we finish with uh, breakfast because it is uh, not breakfast, lunch. It is a lunch buffet on the boat. So I'm hoping by one o'clock we could, we could be finished and then just enjoy a few hours of our tour. And, you know, when you do these journeys, you just want to make the best of it. So by this time, I'm hoping that the it's crazy rest, like resting on the plane and then resting at a hotel and then having to leave the morning to get back on a flight. I know, but it's like, do your best to like get rest anywhere you can get rest. That way, when we have the itinerary and the, uh, the historical, cultural places to go to, you're ready. All right, so uh, day three, there's another interesting day. Um, uh, November 22nd, uh, Cairo. Uh, I need to fix that right there. Let me scroll down some more. Uh, this day I want to talk about is actually day uh, day four, November 23rd. That's Cairo. Uh, once we get to Cairo to Aswan, we're going to go to uh, Abba Simbel. So wh while we're in Aswan, uh, we're going to do a three to four hour ride to Abba Simbel. And that's another historical place uh, with uh, incredible tombs and this, uh, incredible statues. So the good thing is that we have a great guide and I just, you know, wanted to do their, you know, do their job and just give incredible history. And I'm just there to document and also just enjoy the uh, experience. So once uh, we are uh, finished in Abu Simbel, um, it's unfortunately, it's a painful situation because you're, you have, you're leaving early in the morning and it's a three to four hour ride. And then it's a three to four hour ride, come back in the evening. 
but this uh get whatever best rest you can get and uh you know our goal is just to enjoy that day and get you back to the now cruise to where you can enjoy dinner and that night uh, uh is where you set sail so uh day five and day six uh you're going to different places uh, you're going to visit different tombs and so you have a you have a schedule on the ship to where, where you're going to be porting at and you know you just follow the flow of the group and uh, just stick with everyone and just uh, worst case scenario just make sure you get back on because I'm not responsible for for any situation it's not my ship and unlike our bus you know we can stop the bus and go look for you and do certain things and work it out but uh, we have no control over the schedule of the ships and airplanes and places like that so honestly yeah everybody everyone just have to be clear about the schedule and be where they need to be and just follow the directions of myself and the tour guide and uh, the information that we're going to go over way ahead of time, especially a month before we travel, we have a few conference calls. And then we get there, we just have daily briefs. And then on the bus, we have daily briefs. And, you know, we just always at every point just go over information. So when we're talking, just, you know, just give us a few minutes and just listen to what we're talking about. And we'll make it through. Um, I had to do the same process uh, with when I went to Egypt in 2004. And uh, it's a movement. Uh, this is a little more laid back and spaced out. Um, uh, but you're, you know, you, you're, you're going to places where, you know, they're moving ships and they're, they're moving and we have to stick together to make sure no one get left or no situation happen. Uh, so, uh, so that's the only different uh, challenge uh, because if you're with us, uh, you know, you know, we know the situation and, you know, but um, that is uh, something to process and think about. And this, so, you know, so definitely want everyone to focus when we're having uh, discussions and talk. And just, if you don't understand certain things, you're not clear, especially before we depart to, a, you know, to a temple or somewhere. Uh, and again, the best thing to do is to stick with a group of us um, or stick with, you know, and if we break off, at least we're all together and we'll work it out. And then um, make sure that you have your WhatsApp. That's the best thing I can recommend everyone to um if you have the international plan, um, not saying everybody should have it, but at least if it's some of us together, we have the international plan to where we could communicate, even in the case of the flights and other movements, we're communicating. So that's what I have that group page set up. And as time goes along, we use it more efficient. And I'll scroll them down. Um, let's talk about day six. Uh, that's the Luxor um, uh, tour. Uh, so you have two of those uh, journeys in Luxor. And it's... Um, don't always remember everything that we did, but um, I always want to make sure that um, we have everything on the schedule and just be prepared to be up early in the morning and the time will be given. It doesn't even, really even show a time because uh, we know we don't even know the exact time, but we have to plan it out to where when we're moving around. Uh, we just knock out as many things as possible. And then also, you know, we go to the, you know, we find somewhere perfect for lunch where you can just relax, take a break. And then, you know, we'll get back out at it and then we just get back in the evening, enjoy dinner and then relax and just do it again. It's uh, you know, it's an uh, incredible experience. And you just, you know, you just have the en have the energy up. And I don't I know Egypt if it's going to be too hot or so on. But uh, you know, we just you know, by by working these preparations, uh, you know, we get it worked out. So once we finish on the Nile Valley uh, cruise, then we have another hotel that we're going to stay in. This uh, enjoy paradise uh, for two days. And then uh, we're going to head to Urgata and take a break and enjoy this beautiful uh, resort and um. The, uh, tour host uh, lives in that area so we'll be able to just enjoy some different accommodations for those who want to just you know if you want to relax relax if you want to enjoy the aqua park or just enjoy yacht riding or anything uh, you're there and then most of these are five star five star resorts so you'll be able to have all your meals there uh, whenever you're ready and just uh, enjoy your time and then from Urgata we're just going to proceed to uh, Cairo and then once we get to Cairo uh, we have two incredible days in Cairo and uh, you know, Cairo 1 and 2, so Cairo Museum, uh, Cairo Towers, and uh, Day 2, Saqqara, so Giza Pyramids. So the flow is this um, early in the morning and just enjoy the full day. And then this next day, the same thing. And then Sunday is a free day. And then what you're looking to do is more of like a late flight in the night. But it allows you to just be able to just enjoy final shopping, rest, get yourself focused and ready. So this becomes the flow of the itineraries that we're just trying to create. This itinerary that's spaced out and to where you can just uh, enjoy yourself and uh, not really be on a burnout. Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out with our Ghana schedule, but uh, some people say they love it uh, because they're always busy, always something to do. But uh, in this case, you know, I definitely want you to just have more time to relax in your resort and kick back. And uh, even 
even so last Ghana schedule, we figured it out to where, you know, we just stop off in the middle of the, the, the itinerary and that's we enjoy ourselves in a beach resort and you just have to just convince yourself that you're not going to get on the bus and just relax. Uh, but for those who wanted to, you know, we usually have things available. Uh, but in these uh, journeys, you know, it's just a uh, uh, break in time. So that is our beautiful Egypt uh, journey, uh, a step up from what we did 20 years ago. And it's uh, infused with our energy and uh, this uh, vibrance. Um, we, uh, we like to do things in this, you know, enjoy ourselves. All right, then go to one more itinerary. Uh, let's do the uh, South Africa itinerary. All right, South Africa. So uh, South Africa itinerary. So this is the same exact itinerary that we did last year. The only difference is we changed up the hotels because uh put us closer to the ocean front in Cape to Town, uh, which is a better idea. As much as I like the uh, suburb part of Cape Town, it's this the flexibility of this getting just being able to walk to the ocean front is ideal and also johannesburg the city of johannesburg uh, some parts of it is getting a little it's getting a lot older honestly and it's getting a lot more dangerous uh, so the most important thing that we keep is your safety in mind because it's all of our safety and uh, we've been great at that and that's from also planning things out and making moves so We'll put you outside of Johannesburg in an incredible suburbs, uh, which we'll talk about right about now. And that's the uh, uh the Marriott Protel, Protea Hotel Jones uh Johannesburg Wanderer. So that's you know like a golf, um golfing community area, um, beautiful suburbs. And again, when you see a place like this, it's still a lot of black people living there or majority living there. So um, you know, you're still close to Johannesburg, um, but it's kind of if we were to take it to Santon. Uh, so those are the links that we have. It's a little different, uh, but as time goes along, you just create a better itinerary. Uh, so uh, day one, Tuesday, December 24th, uh, departs Atlanta to Johannesburg. And now this is the new schedule, flight schedule, which uh, is recommended, on, uh, which is a lot pricier. But that's the new flight schedule. Uh, now we depart at 6.45 p.m., uh, uh, as a matter of fact, we meet at 6.45 and then we depart at 8.50. I want to say before it was like four something our departure was. But nevertheless, it's a uh, few hours uh, later. So let's give us more time for those who need to get to uh, Atlanta. Uh, so once we depart at 8.50, it is uh, about 15 to 16 hour flight. It's a direct flight nonstop. And, and I had to see to believe it. The flight didn't stop. Um, so after 14, 15 hours, the flight just wasn't stopping. So... Just brace yourself for a long flight. Uh, just get your mind, your body, your soul, everything organized, ready. Uh, we love for all of us to be in business class, uh, but that's not realistic. Uh, but uh, we're all in coach. Um, and um, I'm a small person, 5'9", 150 pounds. Um, and my son is a little smaller than myself. So we're usually okay. And it's still uncomfortable for us. So I feel a little bigger than us. Uh, this... Uh, make yourself as comfortable as possible with whatever you want to bring um, and so just plan for that so we land at 7 p.m so yes we are leaving at 8 50 one day from the u.s and we're landing at uh 7 p.m the next day in another country another side of the world uh so the time change and difference make it what it is uh looks more like 24 hours but it's about 16 hour flight uh so once we uh get to johannesburg we get ourselves organized i get um a, a, a bus uh, driver uh, to just uh, be ready in a location for us. And then we just get you um all packed up. And uh, one thing I love about uh, yeah, South Africa, uh, they have these cool baggage carts, which is perfect because I want to avoid any of us ever having to get anyone to put any bags on top of the bus. And I'm dead serious about that. It's like just because you have survived not having an accident, not having somebody fall off, a driver or whoever is assisting us or myself or anyone, um you just can't take that for granted so we're just making sure that whatever bus we get uh they're gonna have to have a bag cart uh because and other than that they may have to sign off some kind of agreement that if something happened to you i'm not responsible but i don't even even that doesn't make sense to me because your safety is what matters uh crew staff or any of us so that's the only thing that's uh dangerous uh so that's when you go to south africa and you see the baggage cart you always look at it like this is like the perfect solution i've encouraged my folks in ghana to do it I even connected them with a company and I'm telling them if I ever have to, ever have to use one of those smaller buses again, which I hope I never have to, 
that's the only way we're gonna move because it's I've seen some close calls and it just you don't want to see that situation. So that's what I love. So you pack up the bags, you get moving, and you head to your hotel, relax, kick back. Uh, it's late, so I don't know if any food is gonna be available. But if it is, you know, we we'll make sure you get you something or take you somewhere out. Uh, it's a lot later than I, you know would love for us to get there, but that's the quickest, easiest flight that will get you there, the fastest, easiest with no layovers and no bunch of other things. Is that direct uh, flight Delta? And um, I've traveled it a few times, from twice in two thousand five, once in twenty nineteen, and last year. Uh, so it's um it's a good way to get to Umar far real quick. All right, uh, as we're flowing down, so what I have on the uh the schedule for tourism, I like to always get us to La Study Cultural Village because that kind of lays out the foundation of this the all of the cultural. Um, iconic cultures of uh, South Africa and you get to go to um, replica villages and get to this learn about authentic culture there uh, at the city cultural village so Zulu, Hausa, Basutu and a few other uh, communities are there so I have incredible footage of all the communities um, on the uh, South Africa uh, playlist and just like you know so you get, uh, everything that I talk about, I literally record it to a T. I just, I don't know, I was just, I, I was, I'm always in an exciting mo mode, but sometimes I get more excited and you just don't stop recording. Um, but it seems like it's just been this way for the, the entire, entire year. I uh, just try to just get more into recording as much as possible. And uh, some people may never experience what we have experienced. And, you know, I have friends all the time that come over and come by or, and you know this, you know, and you know they they even subscribe to the channel where they're looking at the videos and they can't believe it. Yeah, so I tell them the same thing too. I can't believe it either. But it's a world that we're in, and um, you know, it's it's and we enjoy tourism, but you know, we're also trying to get somewhere in Africa where we can have a base there, and you know, create opportunities for another generation to just do incredible journeys like these and give you know give more of themselves a chance to experience your own continent and this and for Black people just to experience more of a different cultural place. So let's study cultural village. Um, great presentation. And we're going to break for lunch from there and then head to Constitutional Hill. And Constitutional Hill is a terrible place. Um, like probably one of the worst places I've ever been ever. It's just, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's worse than dungeons, but it's, it, it affects you psychologically. This so I'm always just warning everyone when they go to places like that, just brace yourself because you feel things you just never felt before in your life. And uh, I've, you know, so uh, every journey that we have, it has some level of an African Holocaust. Uh, I try my best to get find something on there. Um, in South Africa, fortunately, unfortunately, it has a lot of places, and just like you know, um, you know, Ghana. Uh, but it's a, it's a part of the process. It's a part of uh, our history, our culture. It's a part of the struggle of you know, incredible country like South Africa. So you'll be able to hear about um, all the situations and. I'm, I've recorded it uh, twice in this fullness, and it's um, you know it's worth it to check out. Uh, so um, section four, section five uh, from uh, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Walter Sasulu, and uh, Winnie Mandela. Um, the place is, you know, it's, it's an incredible museum, and I give it to South Africa for just being brave and bold, and just being this, this being righteous with the situation, and this putting the history on display so everyone can learn from it. And it's always a goal that, you know, you, that you hope that it encourage Pan-Africanism and it encourage us to invest and do things with each other and make things uh, work and you know, better Africa. So that's uh, our goal is to share that uh, with yourself and, and record more and share it with the rest of the world. Uh, day four, uh, Apartheid Museum and Soweto. This is another day of uh, incredible history. Um, Soweto is just an incredible place of this, um, uh, you know, what we had to do as a people um, and build for ourselves, just like any Black Wall Street that you find in um, any circle parts of the world. And along with um, just going to Soweto, you have the Apartheid Museum. So it's, that's another painful one. I mean, it's, it's, that's why I just made sure that, you know, we got to, you know, that we have Cape Town so we can show you more tropical paradise. Uh, but uh, this is, it's only two back-to-back -back days, uh, but uh, you visit the incredible museum uh, from Nelson, from Mandela Museum, I should say, uh, uh, to the um, to the Hector Peterson Museum, and you just uh, all that historical place that we you know we learned about that we heard about when we were you know younger, 
Um, you know, it's like this, you know, you're going there and you're seeing it for yourself now. And, um, you know, and the South African government have done a great job just keeping that history going and, in, you know, encouraging tourism. And, um, you know, so our goal is to, you know, we had a great sister tour uh, that, 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 that uh, was a, a tour operator and also a tour guide. And she took us out uh, late on night. I never saw Soweto in the night. So we have some incredible footage of us being in Soweto at night at mm -hmm. um, at uh, an incredible live reggae show in the middle of the hood somewhere um, in a in a in 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 a place that they created and made it uh, a nightclub. Uh, it was it was cool. I mean, for myself, it's always a great experience. And I appreciate everyone that was open. And you know, I'm always honest with people. Our group members before we travel, I just usually tell you that you know I'm there with you the whole time. You're good. Uh, and if you're open to it, enjoy the experience of you not. I do understand, you know, you can enjoy yourself at the hotel and relax and so on. Uh, so that was a great experience. Uh, so just a lot of history there in uh, Soweto and their part-time music. Day five, one of my favorite day, uh, driving up two hours to Palanisburg. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it's it's worth the early morning get up and we're going to have some box lunch breakfast for you and get you going. And once you get to Palanisburg, uh, you know, we have a great company that we work with, um, that do these incredible exclusive safaris and they usually just put us on you know, our own vehicle and we're able to enjoy it because when you're on the vehicle with everyone else um oh uh, you know it's, it's 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 that's another set of experience which is uh fine now uh, but it's better when it's when it's a group of us together and uh we just you know and they have different size vehicles so we can just get a vehicle that fits our group size and then we can just you know socialize amongst each other and just uh enjoy it without feeling you know without any distractions there to just limit us to talking or limit us to doing anything. So that is, um, and we was able to see this an incredible um, you know, safari of uh, animals. Uh, I recorded um, more than I did the last time. I just, I enjoyed those recordings and uh, I've shared a lot, uh, but you know, you, you know, so it's always there for anyone to just uh, look at and, and uh, experience. Uh, day six, um, the free day. Uh, so we just enjoyed the, you know, final day shopping and then just enjoy an incredible night out. We usually go to Pata Pata and we usually go to this incredible uh, strip in Johannesburg. Uh, we're early the day, usually group members go shop, but at nighttime it's live uh, to where if you, once you finish eating, uh, you can head back to the hotel. We'll get you a ride back. Um, uh, you know, we'll get you, a, you know, we'll get you in, a, in transportation back and work it out. And for those who want to stay longer, you can stay longer. And I don't know what where we'd end up at, but it was cool the last place we end up at. So I showed some of those nightlife videos um, of us in uh, Johannesburg and just us uh, socializing, this uh, enjoying ourselves. All right, uh, from Johannesburg we're to uh, Cape Town, and once we're in uh, Cape Town, we're just gonna relax at the you know the waterfront. Then we have a few tours from Robin Island, uh, the township tours in Langa. Uh, then we have a free day in uh, Cape Town. And then we have another day, uh, which is the Table Mountain. We always kind of save the best for last, uh, which is Table Mountain. It's uh, one of the most incredible places that you would ever go to. It, it's up there, you know, with, when we go to Brazil, we go to places like um, uh, the cable cars there. And you just, you, you just get to go to the highest peak in the country. And then from there, you're going to see everything else. And just coming down the cable car, it's like, you know, it's it's not a roller coaster adventure. It's not that fast, but, you know, you get to this, you know, it depends on how you work your camera or camcorder, you could just get it to where you just get incredible recordings. So I'm thankful for the one time I went to Brazil because I got all of it. Uh, I'd have been hurt if I didn't get it because I hadn't got a chance to go back. But in South Africa, we've done, done it multiple times. And the best thing about South Africa the last time, when we went up to the mountains, I was literally shocked. The, the fog that's always there that you could just never time in your calculation, in your mind, uh, when you're going there and plan it out. I uh, was able to plan it out to where it worked uh, the day after New Year's. The cloud was just all gone. So what you end up uh, this, uh, experiencing was literally this, uh, where you was able to go up to the mountains and other people are doing whatever, but uh, I stuck with the tour guide and I just, because you know, I understand you're going to get distracted with shopping and I just, I'm not here to stop anybody from shopping. Uh, it, but I got to get the documentation uh, there. So uh, some of us uh, gather uh, with a tour guide and this is a tour guide. Once you, once you get into it and you know, you ask questions and you show interest, he's going to give you more. Uh, so he was able to show us literally around the entire Cape town going around table mountain. I've never been around the entire mountain at the top and recorded videos of 
I just, I just burned up all my storage space and so the video is up there and, uh, and just thankful to be able to see it because then you know you have this incredible phone and camcorder you can zoom in so beautiful footage all right then uh, we close out with another free day at the end and uh, we just enjoy our final dinner final good times and then let's make our way back so on that note i'm gonna stop um screen sharing and what i'll do is leave it at the youtube channel uh, where i'll pick back up from all right uh yes family um the time has gone by and definitely want to keep us long uh so what can I'll... i ask a question from my... yes i am opening up for questions right now so you can go ahead okay. i was just how many baggage do we can take to um south africa with us and can we pick our own seats uh there's two bags and yes you can pick your own seats uh, once i send you a uh, reservations uh okay like... And as far as the one bag situation, when you're leaving from Johannesburg to uh, uh to Cape Town, it's on South Africa Airways, so they only allow one bag. So if you want an additional bag, you'd have to pay for a separate bag. And then since we're not coming back to Johannesburg, you have to bring the bag with you. So it's always safer to bring one bag. Uh, but then when you get to domestic routes, you may have to pay extra for um, a second bag. Do you Do you know the price of it? Oh, the second bag, if it is. Never remember these prices. 50 to 100 okay. um, is the range I remember because um, I always have to go back to, with the uh, currency. Uh, go back with the currency uh, view um, and check it. But uh, definitely, I promise you, before we even leave and way before that, I, I go on all the files and I look at it. And when we're doing presentations, um, that's usually one of the things that uh, we update. And because uh, then I have to go back to the airlines and just read to what they have and make sure that we have the updated policies as far as bags. But based on the last time, it's um, around 50 to $100. Uh, yes, and family, the line is open. I went through the uh, Egypt and South Africa itinerary. And those are the next two journeys that we have this year. We just completed. Liberia and Morocco, a very interesting journey as we travel to one of the best and one of the worst African countries, like literally. Um, and uh, another phenomenal experience And then we travel to the best country that we have there in West Africa, which is the Ghana. And so now we have the next two best in Africa um, or three in a row, which I'll say, which is South Africa, Kenya, or I should say Egypt, South Africa and Kenya. So that's the flow of that itinerary. So let me uh, hear from a few people. Uh, so um, let me see who would like to share some information, uh, share their experience. Uh, Akovi, uh, your mic is open. Uh, can you share some of your experience uh, with us over the last few years and give some recommendations for travelers that are coming with us in the future? All right, and also family, uh, for those who want to uh, speak or share something, just uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and just uh, introduce yourself and then uh, let me know what questions you have. Uh, so some people may have questions like, uh, you know, we're traveling to Ghana in May next year. Um, one of the questions I got on the group page is, uh, when do we start doing visas? Uh, so for the Ghana page, uh, we do visas. Uh, basically, uh, visas, um, usually about five months before we travel. That's what I usually just uh, recommend and always recommend a multiple entry uh, visa. And Do we need a visa for um, South Africa? Uh, no, you don't need a visa for South Africa. If you have an American passport. So that's the uh, good thing about the uh, South Africa journey. And on here to the left, uh, that is our Ghana journey. So family, anyone interested in the Ghana information, once you click on the link, uh, you can check out the visa details, but uh, once you communicate with me and show interest, um, I, I'll just use you to say, uh, send you the initial email, which is newsletters, and also the uh, visa information so you can process it. And then you can always talk with me, uh, anyone that has any country that you have to have a visa for, and um, I have no problem assisting you. I have, I have big journeys with a whole lot of people, and I've assisted everyone and made myself available. And it's something that uh, as long as you follow the base directions, uh, we can make it work to where 
uh, your communication with myself is limited and you can just process it yourself because once I send you the emails, that's all the details. But I do understand some people may not always be familiar with this process of visa and you may have more questions than others. Never a problem. Main thing you have to do is uh, call me if you don't get me, text me or just give me a chance to call you back and we can always talk about those things. All right, so let me uh, switch back over to our YouTube page. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, again, just uh, unmute yourself, ask a question. I'm just uh, going over some uh, documented information. So this is uh, my uh, YouTube page. And um, I have a nice introduction video. This is before my uh, in the 12 countries, which is um, you know, country number 11, Liberia, and 12, Morocco, or you can just uh, flip it vice versa. Uh, so that was uh, the last set of uh, you know, journeys, and that was uh, 17 years. So that's an uh, introduction. I have not done a 2018 version uh, yet, but uh, that is uh, no, a good introduction. Uh, this sharing the journeys that we have traveled to in Africa and uh, and have a nice female AI voice uh, this, that just kind of just go to um, my bio layout and this, you know, yeah, the energy of what uh, you know we're into. And so from the YouTube channel, um, videos, uh, this video just shows all of the videos uh, and it's 4,400 uh, plus videos and those are accurate numbers. And in uh, so you can always just click on subscribe, join the page, um, share the page and just enjoy any just ventures you like, um, make comments. Um, you know, I was trying to encourage more and more of us to make comments and more of us to just interact. But every trip that I've traveled with, uh, every journey that we have traveled with, I've traveled on, I've, you know, that's what I'm doing there, most of the journey this time, making sure everything is organized for us and doing the, you know, my uh, video documentation, which I've done for 20 straight years of my life, nonstop. And that's uh, that's my hobby, that's what I like to do. So any business that I do, I just do a lot of videos and a lot of documentation. And I got a whole bunch of tech stuff that I'm gonna put together and share, because uh, even, even that situation, we haven't documented as much, but this is what we have documented a lot, uh, Africa for 20 years. So we scroll down, what you're going to see is a lot of the recent videos. And then beyond that, uh, you're going to see all of the latest videos in the, you know, you click play all, it will literally show you 4,000 videos and you can click play all and it will literally just play all the videos. It would take probably forever, but it's, but it's just that much video. So what I break it down to, into is the, the playlist. You can click on playlist at the top, but these are pre-generated pre playlists before and they are, they are literally all of the journeys I've traveled on. That's Ghana, July, uh, Liberia, Morocco in March, April, 2019, South Africa. That's a lot of videos, but I still got about, I'm sure I still got about another 10 videos. Uh, Tanzania, probably got like one or two more videos, but, or that should be all the videos. Uh, Ghana, May last year. And you scroll down and what you just see is the timeline of videos. Uh, keep on going, keep on going. Uh, and all the way to, you know, and that's like all of the uh, pre and post uh, COVID-19 era. Uh, this, you know, nothing doesn't stop us. And then Black Star, there's a uh, lot of our videos of just our initial energy. Um, I have new videos. I just have to upload them from my last uh, journey. And I haven't been to Ghana and long time since this last journey so i've not had a chance to even upload some but that's our community we're always working on it growing it always looking for recommendation looking for people to talk with connect with work with looking for investors business people want to expand and connect with us and you know we're just there sharing our genuine energy and um and this movement again it represents i feel what pan-africanism is different groups of black people connecting together to build something for the different groups of us and or build something more for the collective of us uh so you know, people throw those terminologies around, but, uh, you know, this is what we're doing and contributing to Pan-Africanism. All right, more multiple playlists. So this is uh, Ghana. This one starts off at Ghana 2019. So uh, everything is like um, post, and this one is like pre, uh, uh, modern day era that we're in. And so that's a whole list of Ghana. And then you come down and this is some of our, this is some of the rare journeys. Uh, this is, you know, my first uh, real authentic energy going to South Africa and really putting that itinerary together and that was just a blast. Uh, same thing with Brazil, incredible. And then Egypt and then, you know, so you have Brazil, July 2017 and you have Egypt, May of 2017. So that was incredible. 
And scroll down to the other side and you see uh, Egypt, Africa tour, April 2004, Nile Valley Civilization. And that is uh, myself right there. So definitely just excited about 2024 20, Egypt. Uh, so family, the line is still open uh, if you have questions. And then uh, Africa tour playlists and interviews, which I'll work on getting some more uh, to share the, our experience over the period of time. So this is just a whole lot of uh, conference calls, at least at least 10 plus years, nonstop conference calls, like, like basically almost every month. Uh, so that's our consistency. And um, it's just us sharing the documentation. So there you go, right there, family, this, um, all the conference calls, you can just always click and review. Then you have more playlists of uh, just different subjects. And then uh, Black Consciousness um, playlist with this uh, debates and different conversations and something if uh, your mind is not open to the whole bunch of things that you're going to hear us talk about, um, you're going to, yeah, I don't know how you may feel, but yeah, we, we we talk about all kinds of different things and all these long streams and then the videos before it and in between and conversations and interviews that's done here and get into, you know, serious subjects. So um, try not to be the controversial figure, but you just can't help yourself. Uh, so but um, and whenever we, you know, we share things and that we experience and know and dialogue about, it's controversial regardless because somebody's gonna have something to say, and it's what it is. So, but th these are our thoughts, and uh, you come down here. There's more playlists, and this is a social nightlife in Africa playlist. Uh, some people may, you know, maybe I don't I don't think it's X-rated like that because it's you know, it's YouTube qualified, but it's um. Provocative, provocativeness and exoticness. Um, but like I mentioned, we show all aspects of life in Africa and have all discussions and things like that. It's just most of what we show is going to be or share is going to be the straight hardcore roots and culture and things like that. But, you know, uh, we have no weakness in our game. Uh, we're, you know, we're a complete social person and business person. And you know, so we talk about business and we share social life and some things we just don't share because it's, uh, you know, I don't want people to say certain things, so we try to keep it as clean as possible. But yes, um, you know, we experience different parts of uh, Africa, so it's all there, and all the land investments are there, and a whole lot of food in between. I've shown good dining. So that's the playlist and a whole lot of uh, video uh, details. Uh, so family, this is our Google playlist. So every tour that we do, we just have... Uh, different uh, playlists for different uh, countries so where is that there we go these are albums for some of the last ones uh so uh, you know, i'm gonna boost it up a little bit and get some more people to the ghana may one uh was i don't know we, i guess we all i guess we always get excited for ghana because that's where that's where we have big playlists but also it's bigger groups uh so these are great playlists uh just like the video playlist and this uh you can everything that i have um is to share with every one of us and share with us anyone in general, regardless of whatever the situation is, all public and free information to share and information to process, just like uh, the website. And then Facebook, uh, that's us in Liberia with our classic uh, picture of the, you know, right by the monument of the first president, always an iconic uh, picture. Um, that was just literally just the site I was more looking forward to go to than anything else. Uh, it was just, um, it was a pleasure. It was a definitely great experience. Um, never going back anytime soon, but um, that's why I just enjoy it while I can. And for those who are doing the one and done in Africa, you know, uh, some people appreciate you coming back for many more journeys. Uh, for those who are doing doing the one and done, uh, just make the best of it and just uh, focus on enjoying yourself and just have the greatest time ever. Um, uh, we put the level of energy in it like to re where you can really enjoy it. Facebook, a place where I don't really put a whole bunch more photos as much as I should, but you know, we're tied up in so many different things, but nevertheless, uh, we're going to keep on just adding more photos, but the good thing about Facebook, it has all of our historical photo galleries, especially from 2023 all the way down. 2024, just got to put more energy into getting some more ones up there, but then I've had a bunch of different photos and videos on TikTok, Instagram, and um and we've been sharing more on Google page and then sharing more on the uh, 
share more on the uh, WhatsApp page. So all of these things are set up and designed and organized as a share information to share experience. So you know, check it out, uh, especially if you haven't traveled with us before. And if you're traveling with us and you have documentation, please share it, contribute to the posts and let's all just you know, share the best lives and the best times of our moment. For me personally, um, it's probably my, you know, it's always my best time of my, you know, my life. Uh, enjoying these uh, Africa journeys, um, and no matter if it's one or two people that's uh, lose too much, trust me, I'm gonna enjoy myself and have the greatest time. I uh, you know we have business to deal with, so we don't have to handle have to handle business, and you know that's what it is. But beyond that, I'm looking forward to this enjoying time, especially for those who want to socialize, talk, conversate, mm -hmm. and just you know, and just uh, enjoy all the experiences. So back to uh, the website. So let me scroll all the way down. I um, always just want to encourage everyone just to take a look at the site. Uh, it has up to, updated information for conference calls. And then any links that you need are uh, there. The only thing I got to do now is just try to work a Google photo link on there. But Facebook, um, YouTube, and all the social pages, they're all there. And then you look to the left, uh, you see all the social pages on there. And I'm going to keep you know working it, but let's keep on putting more documentation on there. Uh, the only thing is, like I mentioned, if you see anything too provocative, don't judge me. I'm just, uh, I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing information that uh, the people want. You know, uh, I have people that you know, friends, everyone that asked me to show all kind of things about Africa. So you know, we just you know, but uh, I try to just tell them I'm gonna show you more museum and more circle places because you know it's it, that's the push for us doing. And we're gonna definitely talk about investing in our own town always because you know we have to invest our resources in something that's gonna pan out and something that's gonna you know put us in a different direction. So family, uh, let me stop from here. And please, if you have any questions, just uh, go ahead. I've shared all I can share for now without you know, really just tapping into the schedule of uh, next year, which is Kenya and Ghana. So Kenya in April. So uh, right about this time, a few years back, you know, we was in Senegal and and the Gambia, which I loved and enjoyed, but I've known suddenly one that, you know, those schedules aren't guaranteed. And do I have an issue with sending on the Gambia? Gambia, absolutely not. I enjoy the country. Um, and uh, this, I, you know, we had a great time there. But uh, I do have other countries that uh, you know, I want to show people other experiences in Africa. So these are the list of this um, the thirty five group uh, photos over the last uh, eighteen years. So. Uh, Ghana in July, Liberia, Morocco in April of this year, and then um, close out in South Africa um, last year or this the beginning of this year. Uh, so as you can see, the last few group photos, just very beautiful, very vibrant. Um, and when we have the, these colors on, I'm going to just bear with me. I'm, I'm going to keep on trying to make sure that when I look up the picture, it looks perfect. So just pause and just give me a few and, you know, it's going to be worth it because I'm going to just send all these uh, you know, to you to where you can just keep for a lifetime. And then, you know, we have them in our documentation. Uh, Tanzania, um, you know, always miss Tanzania. It's an incredible culture, heritage place that uh, was definitely always looking to get us back to. And Akuvi, you mentioned that you didn't go inside this museum. That's unfortunate. Uh, you know, more than likely you see things, I don't know who buy these things, but um, trust me, if I have a, if I had an enterprise uh, in African artifacts, I would literally, be shopping there and they have everything that you, you know, and you know, in East Africa, they don't play around when it comes to wood carving. Uh, you know, in, in Ghana, this, what they do in Ghana is incredible, but East Africa is this, you go to this place right here, it's on a whole different level. And some of the, the, the wood carving and what you see is also from other parts of East Africa also. Uh, Ghana, May of 2023, and that's uh, us at an independent square. Senegal and Gambia, it seems, it seemed that's where my life started at uh, in Africa in uh, April 2004. And it just seemed like I always end up back at Gori Island, uh, the, the place that gave me nightmares for months. I'm dead serious. A place that traumatized me. And, and I hope people don't feel like since I've been through that experience, I'm trying to like push it on them. But I just thought it was interesting. Like I was like, I was like other people should feel this. Um, but it's reason why I do this kind of business. It's honestly, that was the, the day that, you know, just like, yo, man, you know, I was talking to, you know, and this is, I don't have a 2004 photo 
on here. Unfortunately, I'm sure I could probably figure something out, but everything is just on the Africa for the Africans. But it's the same location, the first place I literally walked into and I heard the story about what happened to our ancestors. And it just, it traumatized me for, for it, just, it traumatized me to where I'm like, you know, uh, maybe we can encourage more people to learn about the roots and culture and get more of us to do, to try to contribute something to Africa, contribute something to a black cause or you know, something. So, uh, it just really defined this understanding, you know, why we get into movements and organization deal with Pan Africanism and deal with this Af African roots and culture. Uh, it's just something that's very vital and important, um, and uh, this you know try to do my part to share. So, um, it's uh, Gory Island always that special place. I don't know when I'll be back in Senegal, um, but um, I'm happy that we was able to take two dynamic groups, uh, both in April two thousand and twenty one in 2023 and that's after several failed attempts and trying to bring groups to Senegal because trust me from that time I really tried and then Ghana came along and I was able to just do something more organized in Ghana since there was dungeons uh, so go Island right there and so as time go along and that's why I want to build our enterprise in Jahazi because I can offer more schedules and more flexibility in different countries and scroll down to the the, the end of uh, December, that was the last time I did a December journey uh, to Ghana. And then I ended up changing it to South Africa because um, I needed to release one of the Ghana dates and do another country. Uh, so people ask me all these questions all the time, but you know, you have to create, you have to work schedules. So uh, did I have a great time in Ghana? Yes, that was always incredible in Ghana, uh, 2020, 2021 and 2022 in December. And I was forced to get back to the December schedule because in 2020, the only countries that tours that we could have done was Tanzania, which we never did before in November 2020. And then um, as far as um, Ghana, I ended up just doing a December schedule for the first time since December 2006. And it was Alfred Chella and a bunch of exciting times. And it was great, uh, but I moved that schedule around. So these are the dates. So the, the, the schedule just flows. And, and as I scroll down and scroll down, and this is and our nonstop energy. Yeah, so basically from 2020, we really started just expanding the schedule. That's you, Teal, right there. You're back on the journey with us. That was an incredible journey. <laughs> uh, let me see what else I see. Uh, so, and then before this, uh, honestly, it was really just Ghana and then a combination of Ghana and Togo Benin. Uh, did have a South African day. And then some of the countries that we traveled to in 2017, which I don't know, was, was one of my lucky years in life. Because I have no idea how I went to all them countries. I honestly don't believe. Uh, that was us in Ghana, Togo, Benin, November 2017. I don't even know how we... One of my best favorite and this most exciting journey. I still don't even know how we pull that off. Then uh, somehow I was in Brazil. And then Ghana again in May. And in Ethiopia in the same month. But those are the tour group uh, photos. And uh, the videos are there. Uh, so... Amazes myself also, but uh, it's just the ancestors is with you and they just give you the energy and you just work it, I guess, man. Because uh, as you can see before this, it was all one country. And trust me, family, that one country was difficult. So just do three, four country and do a bunch of technology work. I still have not figured it out. But uh, I'm just hoping and just want everyone to take advantage of my energy while we just have it to do it like that and just let's make something of it. And this is the journey with a lot of my close good friends, uh, actually, all to, all still to this day. Unfortunately, my business partner quit because uh, they just wore him out in Africa. They just said it was too much. But, you know, the man with the super energy continues. So family, I've shared a whole lot, so hopefully we can get a few people to share something um, and just have some dialogue. The line is open. Uh, Sian, would you like to share any uh, thing? And because Akubi like bailed on me, she, I've been trying to get her to unmute. No, I didn't. There you go, Akubi didn't bail on. Me. <laughs> I know how to do something. So, Good luck with that one. So Akubi, how has been? Uh, how was your experience just hanging out with us the last time in Ghana and? Uh, and how was it uh, just, you know, enjoying our journey with us in Tanzania? with some of your But don't leave out Senegal and Gambia. Senegal and Gambia was early that year also, and then Ghana. Yeah, and thank, thank you. you. A journey with but us. But Ghana's home, so you know that Ghana's home. Right. Um, one of the things I want to say as far as um, Tanzania, both Tanzania and um, 
what's the and Egypt, a Kemet. They both have um visa upon arrival too. Visa on arrival. If if people want to do that route. And then also one of the things we always say before, on any of the trips, if someone wants to go earlier or stay longer, they have that option too. That can be worked out. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Shahad. And the other thing, <laughs> since you got me started, the other thing um, for the Kenya trip, Kenya, Tanzania, and um, Uganda, they have something where you can get a visa and you can use it for all three. It's a three-month um, duration. So you can really go to all three of those countries. That's another thing. All right, excellent. Appreciate it on that. And, uh, do you have any uh, good recommendations for anyone looking to travel in the future on uh, preparation or just uh, having a certain mindset? Uh, you know, you and I always talk about those uh, things that, you know, we, do, we try to encourage more and more people to focus and just really enjoy themselves. And Okay. You you mean on any, any of the countries? Oh, any of the country. I mean, it's... Uh, okay. And that uh, I just want uh, because it, it seemed like regardless of whatever goes on, you and I have a blast. Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes that's right. Like, by, you know, like, by every means necessary, you know we're gonna have a blast. Um, okay. come with an open mind. Um, it's gonna be a lot of things that's gonna remind you of like the Caribbean or down south or whatever. You're gonna see a lot of your cousins, but then there's gonna be some different things too. Um, I believe in adaptation. You can fit in, get in where you fit in, and I never have any problems. You know, so so even if you don't know the language, you can always find somebody, you know, speak English and stuff. And people really, you know, will help you if they see you serious and you have an interest. And you can start by, you know, forming relationships, you know, get to know people, you know, take your time, you know, go back multiple times. You know, it's people I've been knowing over 20, 30 years. So in various places. And that's that's a jump start for me. So even though some people have like, you know, bad experiences and different things when it comes to land and other things. You know, a lot of people go in, you know, jump in without taking their time. You know, the first person they meet or say some sweet stuff to, they just go ahead. So, you know, it's like any place, even in the States and stuff or the islands and stuff. You know, you have to take your time. You don't rush. What works for one person doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. So you have to go with an open mind. And like I always tell my students, use your common sense. So things could be done. Because once you get in with that contact person or contact persons, you know, you haven't made, you have very, very little problems at all, but you have to get to that stage. So you have to really take your time, have an open mind and connect, network. And I could be, well, appreciate the advice. And um, yeah, so, um, you know, tourism and investments is uh, one thing, but the best thing we always recommend is this, not to rush yourself. Mm -hmm. from... Take your time. Get these long lasting relationships. Take your time. Don't rush. Because a lot of people that go ahead and rush, you know, most of the time, the ones that like just rush and stuff, they end up losing out big time. There you go, family. Right to the point. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, it's can, you know, it's workable, it's doable. And like I say before, you know, any of the trips, you know, you can always, you know, come a week or so earlier or a few days earlier, or you can leave, you know, a few days, you know, later. If you have that time, everybody don't have the time if you're willing to do that. And again, like you say, some of us have been on, you know, more than one, you know, more than one of the trips with Bomani. And then some of us have been going, oh, <laughs> since, been, since the 80s, so a long, long time. So we had that time to formulate a lot of relationships you know, during that time. So, you know, everybody's situation is different, but it's workable, doable. Like I said, if you get in with the right person or persons, hmm, the sky's the limit. I can testify for that. Yeah, absolutely, Yakubi. And I think, honestly, it all comes down to a mindset. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's it's a mindset. Uh, this uh, only thing I'll say is this, <laughs> and this is real experience. Um, you know, we all go through things with the, uh, this um this like literally honestly uh when you when you're traveling with us let's forget about anything else going on anywhere else and especially yes. <laughs> especially like, what especially in America I'm not oh saying, yeah please please you leave it once you get right, once you get to the airport huh, forget it with me the sad the sad thing is coming back 
I don't wear masks or anything. Most people that know me, I don't wear masks or anything in Africa. Here, and I'm up in New York, I'm double masked. People tell me a lot of times, they say, oh, be safe, be safe. I said, no, you be safe. I'll be okay. You all be safe. I'm safer anywhere over there on the continent than I ever have been here. And that's just my opinion. Because when I go back, I go back home. I don't go as a tourist. I fit right in. Yeah, so uh, so honestly, um, it just um, myself sharing some information for those. Mm -hmm. I, I true to heart, I want everybody to have the greatest time ever. And uh, one thing I don't want anybody to do is take, don't take anything personal. This uh, right. that's the country. That's a, and we just have to always just recommend that. And every time we go somewhere, we just share the same information. So it's the same thing that we've said from day one to now. Um, mm -hmm. And and then you know definitely look at the money that you pay for the journey, and then just get every single last dollar. Uh, that's get, right. Uh, and mm -hmm. I mean, if you honestly don't feel like coming out some days i i get it uh uh some days i don't want to be out but you know i don't have a choice but this the reality of it is you know even in that situation you you just want to enjoy every moment of it mm -hmm. joy because by the time i turn around i was like man i gotta get back to hard labor <laughs> oh yes it's, just, it's been no. hard labor just like you're up in the morning and you're working all night long and you have a whole lot of folks calling you, asking you all kind of questions. You have, uh, and you know, when you have a whole bunch, you know, you're 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 in this area, you're in that area. You just, it's you know, so that's why when you see me and you see me, I am enjoying my time, and enjoying it. And uh, one thing about us, uh, we're not gonna argue with you. Uh, mm -hmm. There's only if any of us sit around and argue with each other, just enjoy yourself because. Um, I'm the what I'm thinking about in the, in the next uh it, like right away is like uh where am I gonna go to just have a nice cool cool drink and and you relax <laughs> with some friends you know you are having some good conversations eat some good mm -hmm. kind of relax a little bit uh this uh, you know so we try to make sure you have a nice air conditioned bus enjoy relax uh, mm -hmm. ask any question you have um anything you want to talk about if you need if you have a private conversation uh we're available to talk some conversations you know you may want to private like you may have you may have a question that you don't want anybody to hear which i respect uh mm -hmm. you can run anything by me literally you know, uh, you know and if, it, if it's a, a question you know a question may be you know you know how do i even start a business or what does it, it i don't say it doesn't matter it, you know it doesn't matter and i'm gonna give you my honest feedback uh so mm -hmm. as long as you're traveling with us and looking to show interest let's reach out use all of the resources that we have. We obviously know people in every country. So if you go back, you can use any of the people that we have. You can reach out to myself. And um, and just really honestly think about staying back longer. And yes, staying back longer, honestly, will make you appreciate people like myself and appreciate like what we have done, literally. Because you try to get around in a day schedule and you try to do certain things, you'll see like, man. Mm -hmm. So and, Yeah, but Marnie would tell you that I stay back longer, especially when it comes to Ghana. We talk about months. Yeah, because that's the only way you're going to actually just get a feel of the country. So mm -hmm. if you're just looking to do anything in the country, just stay back longer, just enjoy it. Uh, I remember the first time I stayed back was, I think long time I stayed there, was told us about six weeks, but I've stayed back here and there, um, just almost on every journey. And I've stayed at a friend's house. I've lived with different, stayed with different people. Just uh, enjoy it. And I um, feel like I'm a million percent qualified to talk to anybody about Africa in general. Definitely gone as far as living, doing business, investing. Mm -hmm. Tell you all the good stuff, and I can tell you a whole bunch of other stuff, but it's going to cost mm -hmm. you. So consultation is still there, available uh, for real conversation. But in general, we, uh, like right now is the ideal time to ask any question. Um, if I can't answer it on here, I'll tell you, let's talk. Uh, Mr. Bamani. Yes, sir. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to say, too, um, Mr. Bamani puts a lot of time and efforts as far as the books, as far as the itinerary, and every now and then it may be slight changes, but mo the majority of the time, everything that's in the booklets or the information you get is accurate. The thing I've seen and noticed in the, on the trips is, you know, and Bobani has a lot of patience, you know, to a certain extent, because we have a lot of people that come <laughs> to drive. Do not read, do not read, refuse to read. And all the information, every now and then, like I said, it's minor changes. The majority of the people do not read because all the information is laid down and they come on the trips and that's the same things over and over and over. So it shows. Is that what you're going to call me? I, do well, not, I, guess, huh? I guess you would know because you're there with me on a lot of those journeys. So I appreciate it. Of course. You. Because sometimes and I'm... As, you know, as an educator, thought, you know I'm noticing me. that. I thought it was just me. 
No, it's a trend. And it's more than one or two, three people. So it's like he put everything there. You mm -hmm. know, why so many people are not reading? And they ask the same thing over and over. And we're not talking about when we first get there. We're talking about every day. Every day. So there you go. You hear that family. So word from our wise elder Kubi, who is, um, you know, a travel expert, and that's what we're doing. We just honestly just sharing you real travel experience. Mm -hmm. Now it's an eighty-eight page book, so you probably like which uh, insane person will literally type up an eighty-eight page book? Me. Thank you. Um, and uh, it's not it's not only a printed copy; it's a digital copy. So it's it excellent too. As soon as you're on the website, when you click on it, mm -hmm. you have a, literally a flip book. And then if you want to see all the new pictures and you know, all those links that we have, the new uh, the new pictures are on. And then if you want to download a PDF, you know, I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, 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 I've gotten so bold where I'm like, um, you, I'm giving you a free link to a PDF of everything that we have done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you the first genius who try to copy this. Mm -hmm. Cause he's done everything except put it in, inside your brain. <laughs> and good luck with that one. So hopefully we won't have this problem this time. But but I feel like think about it, Mister Bomani. He still will go over it. He still will take. That time, but sometimes you know it's a thick book. ridiculous. It's a little. It's a. It's yeah. A thick book. You ask Walt Disney World or ask some of those uh, so-called top people in tourism. Ask them to print you one of these. This is this, so everything is geared towards your experience, uh, and it always have the most updated version of that itinerary. And then that's uh, correct. Then it has just every site, every hotel, all the contacts, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just something that you know. Uh, and then you know you have the t-shirts. Uh, Kubi love my t-shirt. She always trying to shake me down. Kubi, do you want one like this right here? Black is my favorite color, and you know, as one scorpion to another, you know how that goes. All right. So, uh, what about the, the the words in red? Do you like that too, also? Of course. It's South Africa. I thought you had. A... Well, South Africa. You know how I feel about that. No. So that means you can't get one. Then you have to you have to say something nice about South Africa. Well, I have one of my brothers. Don't forget, they're moving there. So, so don't forget that they're moving there. It's one of those places you say that's the only place you want to travel with us. That's it. But there, may, there may be. It's not on the bucket list. If it is, it'll be something way down, down, down. And so we have I've to make like a free trip for you to come. Because I won't forget apartheid. I've been in too many demonstrations and too much stuff. And even though a lot of things have changed, a lot of things remain the same. I may get a flashback and go to jail over there. Yeah, uh, and to be honest with you, it's I'm gonna be real with everyone. Like, some of these places I talk about when I mention like terrible places and things like that it, um, you have to just really psychologically just like deal with things that you don't want to deal with. And I, to, I've yeah. had, uh, I could, I give myself, yeah, I've had to control myself, man. I'm even impressed by how I even control myself sometimes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is difficult as being somewhere you're seeing certain things and to just keep your mouth quiet. Yeah. It's same a, thing I felt when we were in Gambia, yeah. Senegal, same thing, Ghana, you know, with the Holocaust dungeons and stuff. Because you remember, I seen, I saw this years ago. Even with Senegal, Ghana, Gambia was my first time going there. But Senegal, I was there, or we were there over 20 years ago. And I thought I was going to have a breakdown up in there. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's, I know. it's a rough, man. I know people like see videos and they see us, you know, you know, most of the time the tour guy is being recorded anyway, so... I try not to be putting people on blast with people crying, but people, you know, it's, it affects us. You know, we're human too. Yeah. Uh, so we're people also. Uh, so, but um, it's just, it's it's like you're trying to create an itinerary to go to Africa to enjoy everything, uh, mm -hmm. the best of everything. And unfortunately, when it comes to Ghana and South Africa, you have those places and it's just, you know, uh, Tanzania doesn't have much, uh, does have one location, the African yeah. Island, uh, in Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt that way when it's I was like, there too. It's like a picnic compared to what you experienced in South Africa and yeah, Africa. yes. Uh, not saying that it was a picnic, you know what our people went to, but I'm just I probably just I apologize. Probably like terrible words that us use. Uh, it's um, a smaller scale. It's on a smaller scale. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so, they Catholic church everywhere. Um, and you know, so and that's that also even when you go there, dealing with the psychology of that because you see this big mm -hmm. church right there. And when you go in there, you're like okay mm -hmm. and trust me um i've been on my best behavior because i haven't been i've not, I haven't i haven't i haven't been debating anyone in like several years about yeah, me too. but last year um I, I think one of the years they got they got this tour guide and he was upset i was like i'm happy it's him not me 
they because they were questioning him about a, the, the Arab relationship with the uh, the Africans and mm -hmm. and um uh, and he's just basically I guess he had more of a some of our people don't have that heart of forgiveness like everyone else do. Uh, so they started getting on him, and uh, he was just basically letting them know that. And I heard him loud and clear, and I just didn't say nothing because I don't, I don't. I honestly was just trying to record and not get into it. Um, he just basically saying that the situation is what it is. Um, the culture of what you have as modern day Tanzania is infu infused with what you have right there as far as this Arab influence, and mm -hmm. that is you're, you're limited on what you can change or do. It's just there. And you just have to kind of just flow with it. And so people will say it's not that simple. And I'll just leave it at that. But please, uh, family, come and enjoy yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. I know um, I don't not I don't I don't expect everyone to agree with me. Um, but just please don't, uh, especially the tour guide. Don't argue with the tour guide. Try to just be reasonable. With him. It's I just felt bad for the guy because <laughs> the guy. The guy is like, this is my country, and I'm telling you what's going on in my country, and you're telling me something else. Mm -hmm. So. So I mean, I I'll take your disagreement and us, you know, and things like that. But uh, please, just uh, it's you know, it's you know, that's that's our host. You know, um, let's try to have a <laughs> let's do our best. I know things happen where, and you know, a lot of times you just you just let it go and then you just recording. So we have had some stuff where you just click and you're watching, and next thing you know, you have um, yeah, you just have I've I've had people just, just snap into the spirit, and next thing you know, a whole other person is just talking and. <laughs> so that's africa so fam we're gonna have to wrap it up uh the line is open if you want to join me in a cool video. just uh we're just sharing some of our experience and just uh let me know that um you know a journey like this it's a lot goes on and just uh just get up every morning smile and be ready just to enjoy another experience uh and um yeah even though i talk about uh even even <laughs> even liberia i talk about that uh, but trust <laughs> me, i had i had an awesome time it's just <laughs> I know that if I try to bring you know, bring a few groups of people back there, y'all gonna be upset with me and things like uh -huh. hey, you know better. You can't be doing this. You know better. Uh, I know that's right. I told but, you. But people, but you know, uh, the goal is just to bring you the best of the countries and the best itineraries and nothing less. Uh, I've spent my time and experience as much as I can experience. I've experienced twelve countries in Africa, and mm -hmm. so that not saying that I've given up on the days of like Togo, Benin, and Senegal, and Gambia. Um, and even Liberia and Morocco, but those are the six countries I have no interest in going to. And the six that I do have interest in going to is, uh, you know, Ghana, South Africa, uh, Egypt, um, Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. And that's based on just looking at 12 countries that I've literally experienced and then saying, hey, I'm going to cut this in half and then pick the top six that have the best time and that have the best itinerary, the best opportunities where everyone would love. And then pick the other six, and uh, just so happened those other six end up at the bottom six, and <laughs> the Liberia being the very last. Uh, mm -hmm. Liberia and then probably Morocco. But Morocco is probably one of the best country out of the entire out of the entire schedule. It's the cleanest country, most more well well organized. And so someone may say, "Well, how is that the best country? Like probably in Africa, and then you have it on your second last list." Because we do things different, you know. We, you know, I'm trying to. Number one, it is a, it is it is the boring country, and mm -hmm. boring automatically puts you to the bottom. It doesn't matter how clean mm -hmm. you are, because I, you know, it's, it's like I'd rather just go back, hang out in the Gambia, and yeah. But, but I, but my point to you, I have a better time in the Gambia, and as crazy as that place is, uh, and that's just a mindset. And I'm also a person that has to be motivated to do the schedule and. Uh, and awesome. I blame that tour guide that kept us in that kept us in that mosque forever. I'm like, yo, oh yeah, into we're not even into. We, I was like, we're not into it like that. I was like, I I even warned him at the beginning, and uh, you know, and I just kept on looking at my watch. I was like, this guy literally have us here twice as long as we should be. Um, but um, you know, uh, it's nothing spectacular. But uh, if you ever want to go back there and enjoy it, you enjoy it. But I couldn't, me personally. Uh, you see the colors of the shirt. You see the colors. It's all about red, black, green, and gold. Marcus Garvey, us connecting, us enjoying paradise, us socializing. None of that is there. So, but the, the lucky thing about it, um, it you know, it still beats out Liberia because, um, you know, it's you know that country is on the bottom because I've never had so many people be sick and you know, food situations. But it's, it happens everywhere. But a combination of food situation, air, dust, dirt. Bad AC, 
bad ventilation, more um, mold in every room, including fancy hotel, all that, all of that is a, a psychological situation. So, and then uh, Togo Benin, the French situation, this it's more French than anything else, but uh, the history is there also, and I enjoy both of them. Yeah. So I'm not dogging out in places, not dogging out any country. I'm just sharing why we do the countries that we have on there versus the countries we don't have on there. So, um, you know, people are going to turn around and say, why, uh, when are you going to have Senegal again again? Probably no time I can think of. Uh, when are you going to have this again? When are you going to do Ghana, Togo, and Benin? I'm like, there's no way in my mind, in my sane mind up today that I'm going to drive through three countries and loop back around. I still can't even believe we did it, but we did it and we had a great time. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't mean that you want to do it again. So there's no multiple country on any of the journeys. It's just one country and you spend your time enjoying that country, the best parts of that country, and then be able to have flexibility to where you can take a break. And so those things to figure out. But yes, Akubi, it's good talking with you and everyone else and family. Mr. Romani. Yes, go ahead. Also, one of the highlights of Gambia, when we went to see the, the Bag family. Oh, yeah, that's your people. Uh, yeah, I love those. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and the crocodiles. <laughs> It's the same shirt as that, man. I just, I love that whole energy. The crocodile, that was awesome. And that's what I'm saying to people that it, just because you don't have something on there, it's not, it's not like you have a gripe with the situation. It's like, you're not a machine. And you just, like I was telling well, um, I was, went to, uh, you know, when my customer's house and I was doing some technical work for her and, and uh, she was asking me some questions. I was like, yeah, I'm drained. I was like, I've been traveling to Africa almost three to four months out of the last four or five years nonstop. And I was like, and so, because I was like, I was like, that's why I can't like. Whenever y'all call me, I'm just not available because I'm always gone. Uh, and you know, but uh, so I was just trying to adjust it to six months. So you know, we're working, working there. This will be this and next year will be the last busy, busy, busy schedule. Uh, so I'm just uh, advising everyone, you know, roll with us. Other than that, I just have limited options, and uh, you know, I can always refer you to some to some, to some other people. Uh, but. Um, you know, that's what we're looking to do. And we're looking to pack all those journeys because um, I need more time to focus on building that town. Mm -hmm. but, um, if no one else have any questions, I'm going to close on uh, that. We are recording on It's not too long, but uh, I have the uh, recording up and this is just another presentation family of us sharing with you our experience uh, in Africa and um, in this, all the details of how you can access the information, process it, be prepared. And just uh, all our recommendation for you to just uh, enjoy. So, thank for everyone for their commitment and keeping uh, the energy of uh, us rolling for uh, you know close to twenty years. You know, we might as well say twenty years. Um, mm -hmm. so we're gonna keep it strong, and then uh, you know, but we need to evolve. So, you know, give us time to make our adjustments, and uh, that way we can evolve and come out stronger in the future. Because uh, none of us are a machine, and none of us live forever. So we got to prepare, you got the future prepared, Akubi, right? Got that right. And where's Sion and Courtney? They're really quiet tonight. You're I'm Courtney. right here. Hey, I know you're listening and laughing. Yeah, I miss you and Courtney. And I see Miss Nelson is up there too, being quiet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I know we're Miss Nelson stuff. just got back from Ghana. <laughs> yes, we just did. And we are home. Thank God we make it home safe. Yes. All the issues and the drama that we went through this time traveling to Ghana. But thank God, you know, the good thing is last year was easy sailing. This year was like yeah. hell. Leaving. But that's all right. Come back some more because I'll be glad to see you all again either in Ghana or somewhere else. Yeah, I don't yeah, think we will meet again, especially Ghana. I don't think she know about the drama coming back, but let's be clear with everybody what happened. Some of it. All of us had a basically a twenty four hour layover, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm taking twenty four hours longer than we normally ch t tend to travel. But I got to I see on share it. Um, yes, it, it it was um just lack of communication with the airlines, especially the huh. British Airways. They didn't. Uh, we were in line in um, Ghana, Accra for three hours trying to Ooh. change our. And finally, yeah. when we got to the gate, um, they said that they. They had to reposition the planes, so that's the reason why we delay for four hours. So mm -hmm. by the time we got to London, we they told us, "Oh, we got to stay over twenty four hours." So thank God I have family in London, so they had to that's come right. and pick up, so mm -hmm. we could get food, take a shower, get some sleep, and then mm -hmm. head back to the, the airport the following day. And that was another drama because they said mm -hmm. we're going to check in early because it's too many bags. 
So mm. they sent us downstairs to arrival to stay for another two hours. Then we have to check in again. Huh. <laughs> and so it was like, you know what? I was like, you know, thank God we had such a wonderful time in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But just traveling between is like just chaos. Yeah, but let me ask, what I was trying to get you to explain was um whatever glitch that they had in the whole system, everybody's like in, in, Jamaica, in July. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why I don't do the yeah. July dates. Too much goes wrong. Once mm -hmm. one thing went wrong, it, mm -hmm. everybody flight back to almost a day. So yes. So yes. literally, I don't think I think uh, you're you're the only person that was had had a different situation because your flight Akubi left from uh, Ghana directly to JFK New York. Now, so somebody, I mean, oh yeah, I was I was there to the twenty fifth. So when y'all were having all that drama, I was reading the WhatsApp, so I know what was going on with all of y'all. I was I'm, lying in the I was lying in the bed drinking coconut water, <laughs> reading your reading oh, your WhatsApp. <laughs> you didn't have a you didn't have a layover, so you didn't have an issue. All of us, well, all of our flights. Had to mine had to go to Nairobi. Uh, every mm -hmm. flight went to uh, either um, uh, Paris, not Paris. Uh, yes, uh, Paris also, but it's mainly mm -hmm. also uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, so, everything was the same oh, day, the twenty fifth. So in Europe, when they have that um, that uh, technical glitch, you mm -hmm. worst place to literally physically be at is New York and Europe. So all of our group members got caught into it, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so I just said some prayers for y'all. That's, that's why family, I honestly don't like the, the July dates uh, because that can go wrong. Wow. So I've got you back in May, but that was, um. I'm happy everybody was able to handle it. And when we travel, we just, unfortunately, uh, it's just like I was saying about uh, in Egypt, uh, some of the stuff is uh, is out of our control. We have to just be on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like the airlines. The airlines do weird stuff. So we have to just like, take ownership and just like, kind of work with them. But it's it's, it's a painful situation. I don't you know. Um, the only thing I could tell everybody is all of us experience it. It's not that that's not going to make it any better, but <laughs> it's good when you have family and other connections, other places that makes a that's difference. Good. Yeah, but that one advice I would give everybody is make sure you have enough time coming back because my husband lost two days of work. Mm. So make sure you give yourself enough yeah. time. Don't cut it too short because one lady that was um, not traveling with us, but she was. Um, on, another group and mm -hmm. she was supposed to go to work the next day and she started crying mm -hmm. and so oh, always give yourself at least two three days extra you just in case mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's why i say before if you can come a few days before in any of these countries or leave a little later yes that's, that's right. that'll work out really well well that's right mm -hmm. have those backup plans and backups to the backups there you go <laughs> never know <laughs> that's right Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, nice talking to you. Hope to see you soon. See you uh, soon. Yes, I'll okay. see. You. Uh, 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 just trying to get you to share some recommendations. Um, outside of just our all of our bad, crazy return to America. Well, what I would say, um, so far between last year and this year, all the groups that we travel with, they were pleasant to be around. Yeah, that's and true. we all connect, and we all got along, and we helped each other out. And that's one thing I can say so far, everybody have a nice attitude, no drama. <laughs> so we're like one big family. And that's what yeah. that's the way yeah. we have to look at it. We're one big family. And yeah. especially Ghana for me is, is very personal because that's home. That's you right. Know, I walk out the door on the airport and then mm -hmm. see Mohammed and Mo Bomani and all the other mm -hmm. guys. It's like all the stress is gone. Mm -hmm. That's you right. Know? You know, it's it's gone, and and you know, I know I'm home, and mm -hmm. the connection that you make with all those people that live there already from yeah. the U.S. and yes. it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. for everyone. So, you know, anywhere you go, try to make connection. That's and right. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty mm -hmm. much it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any hardcore? This um basically this recommendations uh for enjoying yourself and this being healthy and well. Uh, the whole time you travel because we always have one or two sick people. Yeah, oh, yes, definitely. Um, especially um, if you're allergic to mold, I would recommend make sure you get some antibiotics because mm -hmm. I'm allergic to mold and that's one of my problems. I'm still coughing mm -hmm. and luckily I have a doctor's appointment when I came back, but everything is all good. But make mm -hmm. sure you have every necessary medication that you need. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, the medication there is not as strong as what you used to in the U.S. 
-hmm. So make sure you have everything covered. Mm -hmm. So and and also if you can bring snacks that you love because oh, maybe yeah. you might that's one thing I realized the snacks Taco. are not the same. Yeah, <laughs> so different. bring a lot of snacks. Mm -hmm. Your favorite snacks. Yeah. Get better to Costco, get the sale. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Be prepared. I was a Girl Scout. Be prepared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, so I'm trying to hear from some other folks. Uh, so uh, Carol, Shirley, Shelley, Cardi, Rose, Rosemary, Luria. Anyone want to share anything before we close? Because I'm really going to close uh, very soon. Just trying to hear from a few other people. <laughs> All you have to do is uh, unmute yourself. I think they're scared. <laughs> they want to wait. <laughs> well, I mean, if you don't want to talk now, you can always call me, but do communicate with me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, especially since I'm, I am on the move more than ever. Um, as I, I show you, just the difference from the what we started doing in Africa to now. It's just a whole lot more responsibility and a whole lot more things going on. And so people always talk about acts, um, get more help. I was like, oh, we do is have help, but some of the help is worthless, and you have to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we're not gonna call any names. <laughs> I'm not saying that, that one. there's no need to get help, but then you have to supervise and manage. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's too much. So I pace myself, um, and you know, and then you know, we have you know, like in Ghana. I mean, you you were there to see it. Uh, incredible driver, incredible tour guide, an assistant, a uh, beautiful bus. Um, mm -hmm. Guys, they show up on time. I never had to this. I never had to fuss with them about anything. Uh, Especially like my favorite fuss, and I hate to even say anything because I just want to be a cool person. I want people to think I'm this person that's always that that's, that that tends to just go up on folks. But it's like when you're dealing with people and they're not doing the right thing, like if we get up in the morning, all of us finish our breakfast, we were heading to the bus. The driver needs to be on the bus, and mm -hmm. anyone who's trying to get breakfast, you get it before that, but especially before us, you don't show up, and then you. <laughs> And trust me, uh, two of our, our brother Kwabna uh, drivers have done that. And I was like, yo, you got to control your crew. This is not respectable. We're not here to sit around and wait for anybody. Uh, everyone needs to be accommodating us. Uh, so so that's what I enjoy about this journey. And I'm looking forward to getting more people in May so we can have that same big bus and um, play our movies and enjoy our time. And it, it took a lot of stress just being comfortable. And see, and you can tell the difference from uh, when we was at, when we had like 17 people in you know, you don't have, you know, you, you, we all fill up the seats, but then the issue that you have is, uh, I remember, well, I needed more, I needed another, I needed another 10 for this uh, because we have like 10 open space, like the rest of the seats, those extra seats. But what it does is give you a chance to relax a little bit, recline your seat, and then you have your media player on there for your charging and your headset. So if you don't want to hear what no one is talking about on the bus, uh, which mm -hmm. is what I highly recommend, you'd be mm -hmm. able to have your headset and you can tune things out. Um, and yes. And if you just want to watch something specific, you can do that and then just focus on you. It's all, and you can just, just basically, relax. Relax and if you want to come up and talk, the mic is there, you can talk, you can share. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how we initially started in 2007. But over the years, this has been the first time I've had a bus like that in 2020. So we tend right. to what we do everywhere else and just kind of just tough it out. But the only difference is everywhere else don't give you a four or five hour drive. So it's important that we have big groups of Ghana because Tanzania will find we take the same vehicle, man, within 30 minutes, within five minutes, we're at the next location, 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. But you're not on something long. So that's why I put more efforts into the, the Ghana group to bring bigger bus uh, because that, that's going to make uh, the difference um, versus um, the smaller bus situation. Uh, so, um, so see, I, Rosemary, I have a question. Go ahead, Rosemary. Um, as far as the rooms and the hotels, like if it's a family of four, will all of them be able to be in one room? That's something that we'd have to work out and, and, and figure out. The best thing we could possibly do for you is a joining room. So you just have two rooms together connected by a middle door, and you can have two separate beds in each room, so that will give you four beds. That's probably the closest we can do. But yes, if there's an option for a family suite, uh, we'll upgrade you to the family suite and then just work out the difference. Okay, and so a married couple would have one room, correct? Uh, yes, whatever the, the four decide to do. No, uh, I'm talking about just a, a single, a couple. 
the man and wife. Just yeah. they would have one room, correct? Yeah, what you have is uh everything is booked on um this one room. So either you have a roommate uh, or if you're married a year in one room together. But you yeah. have the question that you asked me before was about a family room and yeah, I was thinking about, you know, like other family members that might want to be on the same tour. And they have a family of four, would they be able to be together? Yeah, so that's the option I have is uh two joining rooms. Um or and uh, or a suite, but if the suite is different from the the cost of two rooms, then they'll pay the difference. But those are de those are definitely options. We can arrange anything. Is just we just need to know up front and be clear on it. That way we process everything because the time goes by. So that family that's interested, the best for them thing thing for them to do is call me and just have a direct communication with me. So I'm always advising everyone anything important you want to talk, just uh, shoot me a text. And then give me a call and I'll make time to just have those conversations because when I have to plan everything out, it's easier to plan it ahead of time. But all those all those things are possible. And then for anyone in general, just anything that you need specific, just let me know and we'll work it out. That's uh, our whole goal is to accommodate and make sure everyone enjoy themselves and just be ready. Okay. And most visas, you have to have that three months out. Is that correct? Well, the, well, the goal is the uh, the goal is to try to get everybody to start on their visas in five months. Five I'm months. Not trying to call out the last journey, but what they did to me was very unfair, and uh, I dealt with it and was very nice about it. Um, people calling me at the last minute and a month before we travel on <clears throat> visas, and to call me all throughout the day. Uh, but and you know, like I've mentioned, I'm calling some of them out. Uh, definitely unprofessional and definitely something. Call them out. With too much stress, but at the same time, too, do we appreciate your business? Yes, so that's gonna always be my energy. Uh, but then the amount of stuff that I had to pull off to where I wanted to do a, a you know, because we have a tour book and a bunch of things to work on. So I'm mm -hmm. just asking everybody that's listening, please, family, you can even start your visa now. Mm -hmm. Let's do your visa no later than three months, uh, because we have responsibility to do it. And now, and I promise I'm gonna help everyone with visa, so you can maybe call me. But I can't have several people trying to get visas done in a month before we travel. And, uh -huh. and then, you know, you know, brother has to work. And I mean, uh, Africa doesn't pay the bills anymore. So my <laughs> brother, my brother got to do his technical skills. And I have, I have appointments all throughout the day, the too, uh, too much appointments. Um, and I'm you know, always at someone's house doing something for them. And, and the rest, I'll just be trying to avoid. But so I am just honestly tied up uh, and um, I have time here throughout the day to work on things. Uh, so it gets done. Uh, but so, that's I'm that's sorry, that. but um, the visas, uh, they're they're not available at the airport. No, it's not good at the airport. So that's what I'm saying to people. It's like mm -hmm. if we're going to travel next May. The, the, the most appropriate thing to do is to get your visas ahead of time. Can they do visas uh, on arrival? Uh, yes, but their visa on arrival is not like East Africa. It's complicated. So that's why you will always hear me for the next few months just encouraging those who are traveling to fill out the application, start the visa process, and call me if they get stuck. And it's if you if you got 30, 40 people which we're expecting to travel, it's easy for me to knock that at nine months. But but the last two months, I wouldn't be able to really do it. And I would hate to just like not be available for people. So I'm not saying this for the recording and, and you know why you brought the conversation. So uh, anyone, uh, including yourself, if you need a visa email, all you have to do is send me an email or a text saying, can you send me the visa email? And I'll send a visa email. Visa emails for myself uh, is a full sample application. Like I literally typed up everything on the seven page application and printed off and it's a PDF. And then I have the links and then I have all of the host name that you can put all, you know, my two partners there, uh, all of the GPS address, the information, everything that the um, the paperwork requires. Uh -huh. And I will create uh, visa letters for you as far as invitation letters. I'll send you one of my uh, host their passport um, and so you can upload it. And I also I can help you with cropping the photo to it, a photo fit perfect and resizing it. Because you have to upload a photo of your passport, your signature page on your passport, and also um, a passport style photo. Now I know it sounds a lot, but yeah. if, it is, if you start doing something like that ahead of time, like 
and work to get it done in a week, you can get it done. So I don't want to discourage anyone. And trust me, no matter what the situation is and no matter what I'm, I would never be upset with anybody about trying to help them with a visa because it's a commitment that we do. But I'm just, just I'm just begging everyone, please, just like let's, let's try to get some visas done at the five month mark and give me more time because mm-hmm. uh, my other schedule is not the issue because I am, you know, I don't want to spend too much time doing those things at the last minute because I want to be prepared and ready for the journey myself. Okay, I have another question about vaccines. Uh, what vaccines would a person need to enter Africa? Uh, uh, yeah. what, a different countries or what? Or are they all the same? So there, no, it's not all the same. So in West Africa, which is um, our Ghana journey and which we have spent most of our time, if you're anywhere in West Africa, especially in Ghana, uh, what you need to have is a yellow fever card. Uh, so that is one thing that they're going to check with you every time you go. Mm-hmm. And, and what I'm going to start just recommending is everyone who will go in, just bring a yellow card because, and if you don't bring a yellow card, trust me, you're going to still get into the country. You just have to just be a nice tipper. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that one. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I'm just, I I hate to just be honest because I know some have a card. Like we heard you on a recording saying these things and you just talk so bold. But I tell him, I was like, I'm not trying to like, I'm, it's just being honest. I, I was like, and that means you're trying to cover bad behavior. Your country is a, the country is a crooked country that does underhand things. And it's, and that's as, as fine. And you, you get it sometimes with operate like that. But the best thing I could recommend is get one. But if you're in a situation where because things happen, I'm not here to like hold anybody hostage for this. Sometimes you're trying to do these things and next thing you know, you forget that you, you got it. And then also a yellow fever card. I've known people that have them and leave them. It's it happens. Uh, so you uh, if that happens, then you just you 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 just you be as compassionate as parts. Uh, sorry, you be as nice as possible, and hopefully are compassionate. And then they say, you know, sorry for your troubles. Oh, okay. But but Bonnie, you know, some places, you know, it depends on who you get. So it's best to have that because at least when you do that, that's all. It's one time. It's no more ten years anymore. Every ten years, it's one time, and that's it. Knock it out the way. Mm. Yes, I definitely understand. Uh, you know, you know, don't be trying to don't be trying to mess up my sales. <laughs> no, but it depends on who you get. You know that because some people for they're not gonna go for that bribe or no bribe. <laughs> Best to have that at least that. So, so just the yellow fever, correct? Yeah, that's, that's what we talking about. Fever. Yeah, There's no more COVID. Just the yellow fever. That's the only. Yeah, thing. you may be going to other countries and stuff, and they, we, you know, screening you and stuff. So you don't want to go there. Just have that. Okay. Yeah, more um, than enough. You know, um, so a person had a conversation with me about the ridiculous amount of money that they had to pay for it, and I don't know what that said to them. But you know, I, you know, it's it's rough on me. Um, so mm-hmm. best thing I can recommend everyone do is get a yellow card. Uh, by any means, but if you're not willing to pay that money in the situation, trust me, I'm not gonna let them. I'm not. I'm not gonna let no. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna make sure you get through. You know, you paid your money, you travel with me. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna do all kind of stuff to make you get through. Even if I gotta go call an attorney. I mean, because I'm talking about that's a level of. <laughs> No one gets stuck at the airport for no matter what situation. We we would never do that to anyone. That that just ruins everything for someone. But requirements are requirements. But unlike mm-hmm. like European country, you know, in Africa, one thing I do love about Africa the best is you can negotiate. Uh, you can negotiate mm-hmm. situations. But now they but won't. They won't you. Now, now yeah. if you come up with a visa. I hope nobody does that, but people have done that. And the same thing too, I promise you, I would not let them take you away. We would do everything, but you're just going to have to spend a little bit more money. Mm-hmm. So you won't pay and anyway, so then, that's why you go to And, then, and then he's on arrival. So that's why yeah. he's there because, so that's gone right there. But the yellow fever is all you need. You need a visa and a yellow fever. Those are the mandatory oh. things that I'm telling Thank everybody. You. As long as they have that, come on the mm-hmm. group, you're good to go from there on. That's right. Okay. And you'd like to have that information at least five months out. No, I mean you can start on your visa, but uh we want everyone to at least uh, get their visa done at the three month mark. Yeah, so you want different people to do it. And then if a bo- bunch of people want to do it at the beginning, we can work that out because once I send you the email, honestly, that's all you need. But I'm not I'm I'm not I've been doing visas and things like that for 20 straight years. So I'm not going to compare my knowledge of things to people and make anybody feel a kind of way. So I would help you through anything because trust me, you're traveling with me. So I have to do what it takes to get you into the country mm-hmm. and make sure you enjoy the country and make sure you're safe, you know, and, and think about all that just responsibly on myself. So I got your back on it, uh, but please everyone uh, read the email, print the email out. And I'm not trying to be on anyone, but 
uh, I just I would love to see more people read the information that we have out because I know Amen. Don't it? But I, I'm not. You know, it's it's not like me to argue with someone. I try to avoid arguments as much as you may not believe that it could be. Good luck with that one. If I have one or two, if I have one or two disagreements, that is heaven. <laughs> Because that means I'm really strong, but uh, it's, yeah, I, I, tr I try to avoid situations. But so this, you know, that's those are the situations that we have. So uh, when we do the group page, anyone that's on this call that's interested, just text me your information so I can add you to the group page. All of the things that we talk about, we post it in the group page, and we'll get you prepared. We'll get you ready. Get you excited. And then anyone who wants to look at this book, this book tells you about everything that we have done in Ghana for the last few years and all of the sites and all of the excitements and it connects with you. So you're going to get as much as you all put in and, but uh, ultimately you have me as your someone that have your back. Uh, so um, I'm available to this, uh, use me, reach out to me. And uh, I know it's not easy to talk on recorded calls sometimes because they like, this guy records everything. I'm gonna watch what I say. And I, yeah, trust me, I do understand it. Cause I'm t I tell people all the time, I was like, I was like, don't get yourself caught out in there. I might, I might forget to edit something. <laughs> don't put yourself out there. So appreciate uh, um, uh, Claudia and uh, Rosemary. Definitely looking forward to you know journeying with you for that May journey in Ghana next year. And hopefully uh, we'll shed some insights. Um, and as you can see, um, Ghana is our favorite country and we love Ghana. Um, yeah. And you're gonna hear, you, you'll hear some of the frustration, but it's real. Uh, we don't want to... Uh, we, 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 we have been forced to not play, paint a rosy picture anymore. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, but it's real life. One thing I would say about the country is real life, uh, real people. And it's the only country I honestly give a chance that we can pull off something. Um, but, you know, it's um, more of us go and experience it. Like I tell people, hey, you know, we're always looking for the Calvary. So if you're the Calvary, let's work it. Let's make it mm -hmm. happen. Uh, it's, it, a few of us can't do this alone. It's just so much work to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, so... The connection is good, and then I'm always telling folks here, whatever they want to work on, let's work on something. I live here too. My family live here too. But that's right. Okay. That's, that's our interchangeable connection of world, the Americas to Africa, and that's our dedication. And, and in the future, we won't ever have to travel to Europe. That's going to be a classic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good luck with that one. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I could have figured out already. Well, you know. Here. And also Kenny Airways, we we're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put mm -hmm. you on the flights. <laughs> That's right. You know what? Hey, my points, my mileage. No, what we do, we we'll get you a direct flight from Delta, you know, Delta from JFK to Ghana and JFK to Senegal. From there, you catch another flight if you need to go somewhere else. Yeah, Guinea Bissau. <laughs> oh, I do have another question. Sure, go ahead. About, since you mentioned flights, you said you leave from Atlanta at one tour right and then another one from atlanta so if we live like like i live in colorado i would Ooh. have to pay for an airline ticket to get to atlanta to fly and then you would do the rest of the flight is that the way it goes no that's only for egypt tour the rest of the tour because the rest of the tour we're using basically delta airlines on every every uh every schedule we have except for uh egypt egypt is the only schedule that um, unless you unless it's something you request and we worked out, we don't put you on. Only airlines you're going to be on is Royal Air Morocco and Egypt Air. Uh, but uh, every other country that we travel to is all Delta Airlines. Uh, we did change up our last Ghana tour because British Airways conned me. They promised me they was going to get us the 620. And I don't like the airline. It broke my heart. Like bro bro they're one of the oldest airlines and it's broke my heart. So um, we probably end up just using KLM and this. Mm -hmm. uh, this Connecting to our amps, KLM or, or Paris. As a matter of fact, I try to avoid Paris. Paris Amsterdam is Amsterdam is ideal. It's just a modern airport and they have less taxes and things like that. And it's um if you need something to eat or certain things, the people in Amsterdam, um, I don't know who have worse attitude, but I think the one in Amsterdam is you, you can work with they smoke weed, a lot of weed, so they they tend to be cool. Uh, I guess you can actually talk with them, but the, the ones in Paris they're just stuck up. I'm just being real with you on the experience. Mm -hmm. I have to ask people it's like how was when they ask me well, how the French, the British, and I tell them, you know I tell people in general I don't like any of them, but uh, I gotta go somewhere in Europe uh, because of the attitude. You know, once you once mm -hmm. you, you speak with any kind of Caribbean and American accent, they're like, you know, <laughs> they look at you like it's it's just something that everyone has to experience. So mm -hmm. Amsterdam is where we just do our connection, and then if we get it made out real good, uh, maybe you know maybe Delta will work it out for us from New York because they've done that in the past. 
but um the one that's stable is Amsterdam and it's it's Amsterdam is not bad it's um uh, it's most of what they speak in there is uh English and uh you know if you like shopping there's a lot of shopping also mm -hmm. you're good at cheese if you're a cheese lover mm -hmm. and then you know, it's very and then also very modern because um uh, yes. Paris because I have a thing I'm looking at is for your comfort um and even with um with Kenya I'm still processing the Kenya schedule uh, to work, work work some of these but um as far as uh, Amsterdam uh, very modern when you come when you go to Paris Paris is like it, it's it's a it is like people con you about Europe how beautiful it looks you know they they know you <laughs> go how about go show that airport <laughs> everything is just so ancient so it's it's a, it's it's a look also and then taxes make a difference cuz then you know the cost of the ticket Okay, but with the the whole price of the the I guess the experience is the flight from your home state to the Africa or what? It's exactly as long especially if you if especially if you don't do like the last minute one month. Um luckily the last set of people was from JFK because mm -hmm. wouldn't have worked out. They just lucked out. Uh but Oh, okay. If you if you do everything ahead of time, um, but if you just call me like a month before you travel, I'm not gonna turn your business. I'm gonna get you there, but you would have to probably would have to probably work the numbers a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, do everything up front. Uh, you can you know you can call Delta Airlines and say, hey, I got one person in from Colorado, one person in from there, and they work it, or you can just work it yourself individually. Um, but that's uh that's how we've always done it. Um, uh, but that's the only thing that I've changed off recently is if you do it at the last minute. I may be limited. Uh -huh. That may be more than likely limited. And then um, I'm trying to get everybody on the same airlines, uh, which is where I've done a great job doing that, with exception of like two out of the last three Ghana trips. <laughs> or I should say like uh, like three out of the last six or something like that, because it's a bigger group. But um, right now I got everybody for Delta unless somebody agreed to different airlines. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we all get the around and say all the airlines, Air France and KLM land at the same time. Uh, okay. And then we have a few, few that lands earlier, but at the same time too, by January, they're going to change the flight. Uh, the airlines are going to change the flight schedule. So that's our brace for impact. So that's why in January, we'll do more updates and we'll change things around. So usually I don't have a confirmed of what certain schedule may be until later on. Uh, Cause even, even if you pay for the ticket right out straight up, mm -hmm. it's still, it's, your tickets can always change because whatever, whatever they decide to do changes everything. Uh, so right now that's the, um, the flow of the schedule. Okay. All right, family, we've been on here record time long. Let me get off. Um, and uh, it's all valuable information family. So we're not editing anything. So, I'm going to share with you the details and I'll be looking out for individual phone calls um, throughout the week and we can just, and then I'll set up some new time, a new date for the next four to five weeks for another conference call. And, and that will put us closer to us in Egypt and South Africa and we'll be able to just give final updates on what's going on with those schedules and uh, if any changes or uh, any hotel changes, things like that. And uh, get some more of our people from Egypt to join some uh, live calls and, you know, get you prepared. So until then, family, everybody just keep posted on the group WhatsApp pages. I uh, don't have much to post other than the recording, uh, but anything important, I'll just send posts and then I'll look out for your message and your communication. And beyond that, uh, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, call went a little bit long, but I uh, was able to share some great, wonderful, valuable information. And hopefully those in the internet world uh, can appreciate the information that we shared. And if you really love it, you know, send some fat donations and I still need to build our community in Jahatzi or right, get us some good connects. All right, so family, uh, the journey continues. I appreciate everyone and uh, we'll keep in touch. Uh, the journey continues. Bye. Bye.